Welcome. Welcome to the Calexico City Council, Calexico Redevelopment Successor Agency, Calexico Financing Authority regular meeting. Today is Wednesday, October the 4th, 2017. <clears throat> Roll call. Mayor Hurtado. Here. Mayor Pachepacheco. Here. Council Member Escobar is absent. Council Member Hodge. Here. Council Member Real. Here. We have a quorum, Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, public comments, we usually do not have public comments at this stage. We will be adjourning to closed session. Um, a closed session, uh, session of the City Council may be held in accordance with state law, which may include but not limited to the following types of items. I guess I'm not going to read that. So let's go ahead and adjourn to closed session. And we'll see you guys in about an hour. Thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome, everyone, to the City Council meeting Wednesday, October the 4th, 2017, and it is 6.30 p.m. We just came back from closed session. Uh, City Attorney, do you have any comments from, city, from closed session? Thank you, Mayor. City Council meeting closed session. Um, received direction, but no actions were taken. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, roll call, please. Mayor Hurtado. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Pacheco. Here. Councilman Escobar. Here. Councilman Hodge. Here. Councilman Real. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. We don't have a flag today, but when we don't have a flag, we face north and uh, pledge of allegiance. Mr. Herrera, would you like to guide us in our pledge of allegiance today? Mr. Herrera, would you like to guide us in, pre in pledge of allegiance, please? Yes. Came to visit today, so it's your turn. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Herrera. Okay, our next uh, item is an invocation by Pastor Dennis Freeman of the Christ Community Church in El Centro. Thank you very much, Pastor. At this time, I ask the council if we can have an approval on the agenda or remove any items that you may have any questions. So move. Second. Second. Okay, we have a first from Mr. Pacheco, second from Mr. Real. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion passed. Moving on then to discussion. Oh, no, sorry about that. We're going to do some presentations. Um, today we have two on, on the agenda that you see, but we are going to have one more from GSA, which is a really important presentation uh, by Robert Smith, and he's going to be talking to us about the new port of entry construction, I believe, right? If you'd like to come to the podium, um, I'm not sure which is the better right now. <laughs> Microphone. And you also have a presentation for us to watch, right? In this area, we usually do three minutes, but you'll be by a little bit more. All righty. Good evening. I think it's on already. Can you hear me? There we go. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Robert Smith. I'm a construction manager for the um, port of entry for GSA. 
And it's my pleasure to be here tonight just to give a quick update where we're at with the project. Page down hanging. Excuse me. Oh, there we go. Uh, just a little quick background. The original port was open in 1974. Our currently, uh, we have about 11,000 private owned vehicles that go through, 13,000 pedestrians. Uh, with that, the port has increased uh, both with the pedestrians and the vehicle crossing uh, between the United States and Mexico to accommodate the growth and uh, all the tenant needs uh, uh, for um, the project. GSA has conducted and completed a reconfiguration of the expansion of the port. So the expansion of the project um, is in two phases. Right now, I'm the construction man manager for the first phase, uh, which it, what you're seeing going on out there. There is a second phase that hasn't been awarded yet, and we're still waiting on funding. I'll kind of touch on that a little bit when we get there. OK. Um, Here's just a little scope and schedule uh, for phase one. Uh, it's three lanes southbound. There's 10 lanes for the northbound. Um, northbound has um, a secondary vehicle inspection along with the primary uh, vehicle inspection. It has a head house with it and a kennel. That's all phase one. It was awarded in 2015. Um, construction is 30 months. We're, our contract completion is March 2018. Phase two, um, we're look targeting for uh, funding to come 2019. Um, and with that, it's the demolition of the current port, uh, additional lanes on the, the, the primary canopy and the secondary canopy. We'll have an administration building along with a pedestrian building. Um, it will also incorporate five vehicle inspections for the southbound area and then an employee parking lot structure. OK, so I thought this was a great slide to begin with, with any photos, because it shows um, what the project site looked like before construction actually began in 2015. OK, and this is um, right from our plans. What, uh, when it's all done, what it should look like, you see the primary um, inspection. Um, as you uh, enter uh, United States. Over to the right, there's a employee parking lot um, area. The secondary inspection is right in front of the pr uh, primary inspection. To the right will be the head house. And on the north side uh, is the kennel. And then you can see um, where you enter and exit the port is um, Cesar Chavez. That's where it will be going. So. Excuse me. Yes. Quick question. Yes. Um, <clears throat> there was another rendering that we saw which had access to um, Imperial Avenue, um, which, which when the people would come in and pass the actual inspec inspector, they would have an option to go to Cesar Chavez or to Imperial Avenue. That's not on there. So I believe that will be on phase two. That's phase two? Yeah, we'll see it. Uh, I okay. have another um, rendering. OK. And so we'll look for it on there. All right, sorry to jump two. the gun, but that's oh, very no. important to our city yes. to make sure yes, that our that Imperial Avenue mm -hmm. continues calm, calm to. Down. Thank calm down. Thank you. Calm down. Uh, oh. OK, oh, oh, back. OK, so um, this is uh, a, a recent aerial photo back in August. So. Yeah. If you go by, you've probably seen a lot more construction than what you see in this photograph right here. But you can see it's starting to come to form. You see the primary canopy being erected. The head house is standing there. And you actually see the foundation for the secondary uh, canopy um, being erected. They have paving already for the southbound lane, and the bridge is constructed. So just a, uh, a couple photos I have. This uh, is Thanks, looking north right as you enter the United States. So you'll have the, the, um, the gantry signs, and then you're going right into the primary canopy. So that's a, another look at the um, leaving the gantry into the primary canopy area. 
This is a great shot to show the primary canopy, but beautiful uh, mornings in Calexico. You see it at the sunrise. But uh, you'll notice, too, that um, we haven't started the inspection booths area yet. So um, the canopy is almost completed right now for being erected. This you'll see, um, this is the secondary inspection uh, being constructed. And over to the right, you'll see the head house. This is uh, another shot so you can see the head house and, and uh, the view of the house overlooking right. the primary yeah. and the secondary inspection. Um, I, I was pointing out that the, the port will enter and exit into Cesar Chavez. And so currently right now it will, will need to open up a little bit more of the entry there. So the curbs will have to be moved and the street lights are currently in that location right now. So we are working with the city uh, to, um, for a plan to relocate those city lights. So we'll be working very closely to make sure that it's a smooth transition. Okay, I do have like a flyover really quick I'd like to show everyone. So this is, uh, this is a recent flyover, um, September 20th, it, uh, what it said. So they did a, a fabulous job on it. So you can see the, the secondary canopy, like in the, the photograph I had, you see the, the uh, head house, the gantry signs. Yeah, it's, I just. There we go. In a drawer? Yeah. Got you too. It's, it's great how they do the pool over and the people that fan around too. So you can see the kennel to, uh, up on, the north side of the secondary inspection. Where's the wall gonna go? <clears throat> Your wall. Smith, what is our um, a collaboration with our neighbors? How are they? Uh, how are they working towards making this <coughs> work with us on the north side and there, them on the south? Um, are, we, are we are we talking um, <coughs> activity? <coughs> okay. Uh, I, I right across the street is uh, the the mall strip that's right there. Um, uh, I go over there at least once a month and just talk with, with them to see how our things are going. Um, no comments right now. They're working with us. We're putting a <clears throat> sewer lift station in that area. So I'm trying to make sure that if they have any concerns, I could address it right then and there. I have somewhat of a, 
I think, important question. Sure. Mexico's not even started. Very true. <laughs> um, which uh, I think we need them, right? We do. <laughs> Maybe we can't open without them. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, nobody has a pick or shovel on that side at all. Yeah, no. Um, and so uh, it's kind of kind of frustrating to see that. Yes, I, I totally understand. It's frustrating on my part, too, mm -hmm. working hard trying to make sure I meet a deadline that I don't see anything on that side going on. Yeah. But that, I, that was a concern. Yeah, and I do know from what I'm, what I'm told is that there is a binational meeting October 23rd. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is? No, but okay. that, that's... Superficial. Yeah, that's re that's just that's regional. Local. Oh, you're talking that's not about the agencies. Federal. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and at that at that meeting, um, there Mexico is supposed to reveal who their contractor is, and then we have asked on the GSA side, once they uh, recognize who their contractor is, to sit down and have a technical meeting uh, on the Mexico with the Mexico constructor. Uh, to make sure that we lined up. So what we're asking, we're already kind of uh, trying to get ahead of it, and we have asked Mexico, the first thing is to get the grading so that we can open up the north and southbound lanes. Quick question. Um, well, I had three, now I have two. Um, you mentioned phase one is 10 northbound lanes? Yes. Which is basically what we have now. So it's a two-tiered question. One question is, will Phase two will demolish the existing facility, remodel it, and it'll be a, a, a much larger pedestrian port of entry, if uh, I understand everything correctly. So um, they'll, they'll demo the existing building and then erect a new pedestrian crossing right and there. And that's phase two? Yes, sir. So during phase one, will we still have the, will we, will we still utilize the existing facility as a car port of entry? Uh, I believe that's what, if they get the lanes to open up on the Mexico <clears throat> side, I believe that's what they're looking at right now. To have both open. So in other words, for a, for a momentary period, we will have, or temporary, we will have 20 lanes open. So I don't know if CBP will be um, operating the vehicle side of the, the current port. They might uh, close down the vehicle side, allow the pedestrians to come through, and then use the, the new port for the vehicles. I don't think they have enough manpower to man both. both. I'm, just, I'm yes. just thinking out loud here. I agree. In the short term, for the two or three years, we're really not going to be much better off, unfortunately. The other, my other question is the, uh, the new port of entry or the east port of entry has Sentry Ready Lane mm -hmm. or Global Ready Lane and, and Standard Lane. Will we have that option in Phase 1 or not until Phase 2? Um. So phase two will expand the primary um, inspection area. Um, the canopy will be expanded with lanes also. Um, it will, it still will be designed for um, personal vehicles, RVs, but nothing bigger than that. No, no, the, currently there's three lanes open at the, which are typically three lanes open in, in most parts of entry, which are your global or century lane, mm -hmm. expedited. Oh. Yes. Then you've got your rail lane, which is your, kind of your, your middle of the road, and then you've got yeah. your regular yes. uh, lanes. Yeah. So my question is, at the new port of entry for phase one, will we have that option? That currently isn't available in our current port of entry, west port of entry. Yep. Currently, we only have the global sentry, mm -hmm. uh, rapid pass, and the standard lane. Okay. So that, that's, that's my question. If you know. I, I don't know, to tell you the truth. I know we've talked about it, but I don't know the great detail to really comment on that at this time. Okay. Um, I, have a, I have a question as well. Um, they, we actually toured the port of entry in San Isidro yes. about two years ago, and um, it was a very, very, very nice facility. Um, and my understanding is it was uh, self-sustained as far as water treatment and everything. Is this the same similar situation, or are they, are they going to use uh, city water and, and all that uh, they, as well? Yeah, we'll be hooking up the city water to it. Um, but they'll have, uh, I have a slide that kind of shows that some of the lead uh, functions for the facility. Um, and it will have a backup generator too, like typical of what it should have. But it won't have its own water treatment plant. Okay, the one in San Isidro does, yeah. well, I believe so. Okay, a lot also. Um, so the 10, the 10 lanes, my understanding was it's 10 lanes double stacked. 
That is true. I think correct. So is the reality, is it's twenty. It's twenty lanes. Phase two is the double stack. Okay. I believe. Because if ten ten lanes are going to be open, it's the same thing we have. We're yeah. we're not going to expect any reduce in, in you know times from crossing times. But yeah, like it's twenty it's double it's stack. Phase two. Yeah. Phase two. Okay. All right. Well. We're not better off short term. Not short term. Short -term. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I believe when they put the whole project together, they didn't expect phase two to be awarded so late. Um, well, technically, it hasn't been awarded. Yeah. Fun funded. Funded. Funding, funding has, not been, funding yes. has not been allotted. Allotted, yeah. It was approved, the project, but not funded. funded. So, we need funds. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith, very All much. Right. Is there any other questions from the council members? Did you want me just... Uh, Going to close that Go up? Through, close up a little bit some of the um, timelines here. We kind of talked about them. Pretty much, you'll see in March 2018 is our contract completion time, and it t talks a little bit about the head house and the kennel. Um, we're targeting March 2018 for the head house and open summer 2018. Um, here's some of our lead functions. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, the building or the campus will be LEED certified, and here's some of the um, LEED certification items that we'll be having. Um, here's a rendering of phase one. Um, here's phase two, and you do see on phase two the lane um, that will exit and go down um, Highway 111, so it does have that exit to the, on the right side. The rendering of uh, phase two. And then this slide, you can see the admin building, part of phase two on this. Uh, here's the pedestrian pavilion um, looking north. I also have one on First Street uh, of the pedestrian pavilion. Let me glance. And that's, that's in a nutshell. Is there any other questions? All right, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank are you. Are you on target? You. Are you um, pretty much? I, I think we had families? some. Very good question. We have some um, modifications we're still trying to get through right now that I think will push it out a little bit. So it's hard to say March, 28, March 2018 will be, will be done contractually right now. We're still targeting for that. But we do have some modifications that we're working with. Uh, I'm, I'm probably this, the doing the Cesar Chavez and the light relocation might push it out a little bit on that end too. Um, so um, hard big for project, me to say. Big project. It's a very big, big project. project. A lot of moving parts and trying to coordinate uh, with a lot of people. Uh, but I really enjoy it. It's, it's a pleasure For now we're going to gonna just ask the citizens of Calexico, pardon our dust. We're almost done. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you for your time. Thank you very, very much. Very nice building. <laughs> All righty. That was good news. We're going to then continue on with our presentations. Our next presentation, item number two, is proclamation of Calexico City Council declaring the week of October 1st to the 7th as National 4-H Week. Anybody here representing 4-H? Yeah? We're going to read this. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything we need to. Okay. We're going to read something for you. Yeah, we're going to read something for you, the pro actual proclamation. This is the proclamation here. Um, whereas 4-H, in the nation's largest youth development organization, an expansive network of 540,000 members and 3,500 professionals from the nation's 109 land-grant universities and the Cooperatives Extension System, supporting 6 million young people <coughs> engaged in hands-on learning activities in the areas of science, citizenship, and healthy living. Whereas 4-H has been helping youth and adults learn and grow together and work together for more than 100 years, has more than 60 million alumni across America responding to challenges every day in their communities and their world. Whereas 4-H has brought to urban, suburban, and rural communities throughout California by the University of California, agriculture and natural resources, and supports healthy families, communities, by connecting parents and volunteers with the University of California faculty, staff, and resources with direct access to technological advances in agriculture and environmental sciences, health and human development, and related areas. Whereas 4-H teaches young people essential skills they need to thrive and succeed throughout their lives, such as identifying sparks, desiring knowledge, 
setting goals, self-reflection, adapting to new situations, communicating and responding to the needs of others. Whereas the University of California Cooperative Extension Imperial County 4-H Youth Development Program staff, <coughs> volunteers, support young people in elementary high school <clears throat> with programs designed to shape future leaders and innovators that help young people reach their full potentials as competent and confident leaders who contribute and are connected to their communities. Whereas 4-H has helped 7,000 youth each year in Imperial County to become com confident, independent, resilient, and compassionate leaders. Now, therefore, I, Marie Turtado, Mayor of the City of Calexico, on behalf of the Calexico City Council, do hereby proclaim the week of October the 1st to the 7th, 2017, as National 4-H week. week. In witness whereof, I hereto affix my signature and official seal of the City of Calexico this fourth day of October, 2017. Do we take a picture? One at a time. Another one. Here we go. Next one. Crime Prevention, Crime prevention month. month. Yay. Okay. This one's for you, Chief. Whereas, <laughs> Proclamation of the City Council, Crime Prevention Month, October 2017. Lots going on in October. Whereas the vitality of the City of Calexico, California depends upon safe homes, neighborhoods, schools, workplaces, and communities. Whereas crime destroys and fear debilitates our faith and trust in others, elected officials, and in civic institutions, threatening the community's life, liberty, and general welfare. Whereas people of all ages from all walks of life must be made aware of their personal responsibilities in helping people keep themselves, their families, and their communities safe from crime. Whereas people of all ages must be informed of the dangers of technology, technological, I'm sorry, informed of the dangers of technology, crime, and how they can protect themselves from potential danger of those who use technology to commit crime. Whereas the personal injury, financial loss, and community <coughs> deterioration resulting from crime are intolerable and require investment from the whole community to eradicate. Whereas adults must invest time, resources, and policy support in effective prevention and intervention strategies for youth. So too much so too must teens actively engage in driving crime from their communities. Whereas crime prevention initiatives are not the sole responsibility of law enforcement, communities must work together with law enforcement to promote collaborative efforts that make neighborhoods safer for all people and develop positive opportunities for young people to thrive. And whereas effective crime prevention programs excel because of partnerships among law enforcement, other government agencies, civic groups, schools, faith communities, businesses, and individuals as they help nurture communal responsibility and instill pride. Whereas the Kennedy Gardens Neighborhood Watch, Heffernan Memorial Healthcare District, and Calexico Police Department has partnered with multiple community groups and individuals to celebrate self, safe communities as a part of National Crime Prevention Month. Together, they have organized community events in support safe and healthy communities. Therefore, I, Marie Turtado, Mayor of the City of Calexico, do hereby pro proclaim October 2017 as Crime Prevention Month in Calexico, California, and urge all citizens, government agencies, public and private institutions, and businesses to join and support our Celebrate Safe Communities initiatives, which will run throughout the month. I call upon them to help me in investing the power of prevention and community cooperation that will ensure Calexico, California 
is a safer, stronger, and more caring community in which we will all live, learn, work, and play. In witness whereof, I here to affix my signature and official seal of the city of Calexico on the fourth day of October, 2017. Who would like to approach? I forgot to give you your... <laughs> Chief, Chief, you like to... Chief, and, and 4-H. Yeah, come on, we're gonna take pictures. You want all of us? McGriff. Ruff, McGriff. McGriff. Take a bite of the crime. Javier, you have to get in the picture, Javier. when you need him. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was really important too. Uh, really dumb. For Calexico. Okay, we're going to now, we finished up with our proclamations and presentations, so we're gonna be moving on now to the public comments portion of our agenda. Um, public comments and public appearances. This is the time for the public to address the city council on any item not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council. The mayor will recognize you and when you come to the microphone, please state your name and place of residence for the record. While members of the public are encouraged to participate, it is unlawful to disturb or delay the council meeting with personal or slanderous remarks. If the item you wish to comment on is a consent item, please comment now. The city council is prohibited by state law from taking action or discussing items not included on the printed agenda. If the item you wish to comment on is on the public portion of the agenda, we will take your comment when you get to this item on the agenda. Please direct your questions and comments to the city council. Okay, so we are going to start with our first uh, public comment, which is from a, a public uh, person who's not here right now, but she did ask a, to the city clerk is telling me, uh, city attorney, that she would like for me to read this so that it's added to the actual record. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah we any, any, any right sort now? of written comments, we generally just state the, the individual and we record that. We generally don't state the comments. Oh, okay. Um, but this would then give, be given to the clerk. Correct. But, but any comments that are written would be part of the record. We just wouldn't read them into the record. All right. Appreciate that. Appreciate the clarification. All right. So this is a message from Maribel Padilla. It is to the city council with regard to the subject hepatitis A. And uh, she's a Calexico resident and did write on the backside here her comments with regard to, uh, to the portable toilets. I wasn't here in the last issue. meeting. Mm -hmm. So if you don't mind, can you hand that to the clerk and she'll add that then to the record. Thank you. Okay, next speaker for public comments would be Ben Horton. We were having trouble with one of the um, microphones, the, the <clears throat> portable one, right? But those are okay? These are, these are fine now. Okay. Uh, ben Horton, Calexico. My comment is in reference to what we've been trying to do. I have been uh, working with uh, investors and we've been vetting investors from uh, Mexico with an attorney from Mexico. But one of the things that we noticed is that we went to uh, Cole Road and then we went inside the uh, Sunset Street and we noticed that there's a lot of landscaping, dumping of buildings that have been burned on the street. And uh, if you're looking to invest in a city, it doesn't look too nice if the city looked like it's a garbage pit. And uh, that's something that I feel that we should look into to make the, the city more appeal to investors. And it doesn't look good if the part of the city is already 
dumped outside of the city on, on Cole Road. That has to be cleaned up. And another point that I might point out is um, <clears throat> I listen to the news on KXO, and I hear that the uh, mayors from El Centro and Brawley make reports every time after a city council meeting. I would hope that maybe we can do something like that with the radio station, KXO, have our mayor to give reports of what took place in the city so our, the public will have an understanding and have a, a graph of what's going on, not just from the video, but also have a report on the news of our city what's taking place. That is my comments, thank you. Mr. Hearn, the property, is that city property? Yes, it is. It is city property. Thank you, Mr. Horton. Next speaker, I have uh, Javier Gonzalez. Good evening, the Honorable Council, Mayor, members of the public. My name is Javier Gonzalez, and we've been a, an official National Neighborhood Watch since 1995. We want to thank you for the proclamation. It's about the 20th proclamation we've gotten. Um, but these efforts do take a community, community group. I mean, we fought crime for a long time. We lowered it at one time to 80%. Some of our members were stabbed, beaten, but we still keep on. We just want to thank you very much and let you know that there's a lot out there. The reason we celebrate crime prevention, right now in California, there's just 59 million sitting there for youth violence prevention programs, boxing, soccer, 4-H, Nobody asks, nobody asks for them. And we won't get them anyway. The way we are, we won't get them, but we just want to let you know we're still fighting. We're fighting out there every day with our neighbors. Now we're trying to do a coalition between the neighborhood, the housing authority buildings that are there, senior complexes. Our area is pretty much low income. We have a lot. We want to thank you very much. We just want to let you know that our, our, our health and safety fair has been moved to February the 10th, which is health month and Crime Prevention Week. We had a little problem, but that's fine. I want to thank the people that who, have, who have supported us in the past. They've always sponsored our, our events, and we try not to use public funds. We always try to use private to get them involved. All we need for our fair will be if, you, if the city will help us with, um, with uh, waiving the um, event fee and the park fee. And with that, we'll do our part. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Gonzalez. Next speaker I have, Mr. John Renison. Honorable City Council and um, City Attorney, City Manager, and everybody, how are you? A uh, couple of, three things. I want to thank the city, the ICTC, the county, Highway Patrol, and Reggie Gomez, who we all had a big meeting on Monday regarding Highway 98. And we're working on it. You've been reading about it, the problems between Andrade 111. Uh, we think we have a partial solution. Uh, the chief police just informed me today they're having a big operation on Friday. We've got to slow down the traffic there. We're going to have near misses on CN Perry, as you've been reading. But we're working on that, and we're all working together. That's the important thing. Everybody, there was 12 people at that meeting, and it, uh, the city manager was there. The public works director was there. We had everybody there at the table, so we're all on the same page on Highway 98. New River, on October 30th, Monday, there will be a siding ceremony, more than likely, regarding the New River, that uh, $10 million that's been committed for the first phase of the cleanup of the New River. It'll be the county, the IID, the city of Calexico. Carlos, I think the, uh, the MOU looks pretty, pretty good at this point. It doesn't commit anybody to a long-term fix. It just says, if the state does this, we'll do that. IAD, Calexico, the county, and the state. We're all together on this. Salton Sea. The state of California will be issuing an RFP for the C to C. You've probably heard about that. For years we've been talking, how do you fix the Salton Sea? Well, the state's going to spend $80 million on mitigation. That doesn't solve the water problem. So the, the, the state of California is going to uh, issue an RFP regarding uh, parties that are interested in bringing water from Mexico, from the Gulf, to the Salton Sea, via the Laguna Salada, to the border, and then an aqueduct to the Salton Sea. And uh, we, we already have reason to believe that there are, are some companies that are already lining up to uh, bid on that, and it looks very promising. It takes t presidential permits. It's going to take years, 
But if you don't start now, we'll be talking about this in 10 years, and we don't want to do that. Uh, I have asked the city, the county council, our attorneys to look into suing the federal government on the New River because they've done absolutely nothing. Now, Juan Vargas is a good advocate, but he can only do so much. He has introduced legislation to help us, but there's no money tied to it. If you've been reading the paper lately, the city of San Diego, Imperial Beach, and various cities in San Diego are thinking of, uh, actually, they are suing the federal government uh, about the uh, pollution from Mexico. Uh, Jose Angel from the State Water Board is frustrated because uh, the International Boundary and Water Commission has not, has not come to the plate on the New River uh, working with Mexico. So that's another thing that's a big issue for Calexico. The port of entry, uh, tomorrow there'll be a border meeting uh, binational, and uh, I don't want to confirm this, but we have reason to believe there might be an announcement tomorrow regarding the Mexican port of entry funding. And it looks like it's a good announcement. I don't want to confirm that, Mario, it's tomorrow. So I, I don't want to spread any rumors, but it looks positive. In my opinion, <laughs> but you in did. my opinion. <laughs> you don't want to but, mention it, but. But, but, but you if Mexico, let, but. Me, let me tell you. <laughs> keep it, keep that's it like Trump. Secret, okay? <laughs> there might be an announcement. I, I had news. calls today. I had calls today from Mexican officials. I don't want to confirm So I don't want to confirm or deny it, but I'm going to say He's it looks us. positive. So because can you imagine if we had a port of entry to nowhere in March? You know, we don't need that. So phase one in, on the U.S. side, they're great, but we need to, Mexico to do their part. And at this point, it looks positive. If they start in November, they'll be done by March. I can, I can guarantee you. No, they will. They'll be done. And uh, some people are saying, no. But, you know, Mexico just, they, want, they set their mind to it. They get it done. Thanks. So those are my, and then I want to congratulate the city manager for hiring Miguel Figueroa. Oh, my God. He stole a, a county employee, but... What, what a fine, man. The county and the city We're are working all, so well together. Thank you, John, for training him all and these I, years. Yeah. The county does a terrific job, and, but I want to commend Armando because he knows how to hire. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Renison, you know, there was a little bit of a talk around there that maybe we ought to give you or, or the county representatives an area on our, on our agenda. And maybe you can come and entertain us every, every meeting or at least once a month. But I mean, Not it's boring. good. Would you just, uh, right now there's so much Updates. going on. With I like Updates. the Donald Trump impressions. Updates. Okay, so that's a yes. Yeah, okay. So we'll put them at least once a month, Mr. Villa. County supervisor's opportunity to, to update us. Thank you, John. Very, very, very informative and very important stuff. Okay, next public comment is Mr. Beaver, James Beaver. Something about not on the agenda, but I guess it's public Good comment. evening, um, ladies and gentlemen of the council. City Attorney and uh, City Manager. Uh, several weeks ago, I requested from the City Clerk a letter uh, basically confirming my the role as a Police uh, Advisory Commissioner. Uh, and the reason was I, I applied for the National Sheriff's Association out of uh, Alexandria, Virginia, and the National Neighborhood Program, they, were, uh, they, 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 they have nationwide, and they uh, as background, I said, well, I've had some experience as a commissioner uh, for the Calexico Police, so they requested a letter, very informal. I notified the clerk, you can address it to me, to whom it may concern. Congratulations, uh, you know, you're, for being a, you're a city count, uh, police commissioner. Very short, one or two lines, and uh, res the response I got back from the city clerk was, uh, uh, we don't have a policy for that, so I... I I then uh, directed a letter which I hand delivered to Mr. Villa about two days ago. I don't think he's had time to even look at it. But I'm asking the city council to vote on this issue or give direction to the city council, to the city manager to issue me that letter. I don't see any legal complications or implications of any harm done to the city. Uh, for my request, uh, would it be Mr. Campos? And, uh, uh, I've looked over this. It's just a, a letter to help me qualify join this national organization. And I'm here tonight to ask you, the council to either, or the city manager to approve that letter. Two or three lines. I don't see where it can be of any conflict. And this is where I'm here to ask that they issue me this letter, uh, which I am a police advisor commissioner. 
So I'm not asking for something that's not there. Just a plain, simple letter. Congratulations. You know, you've been appointed as a city uh, commissioner for the city of Calexico. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> huh? Because this is holding my application for that organization. Okay? I appreciate that if you guys would get to this as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beaver. <clears throat> Next comment is Jason Jung. He's not here. Oh, yeah, he is. Jason Jung. City Attorney, I, I know that's public comment, but um, how do, what would be the right um, I guess, uh, way for us to go about that? Um, is that something he can take up with the city manager? Yeah, we discussed it. Uh, just, just for background, generally okay. we haven't done that in the past. That's the only reason um, that was response from city clerk. We haven't issued those type of letters, but okay. um, it's something we can definitely review that. Okay. Maybe we'll Ready, Mr. Jung? Whenever you guys are done. You guys are done? Sorry about you the interruption. You're ready to Thank go. Thank you. All right. Hold on, hold on. Let me start your four minutes. Give me a second. Right. start the timer? All right. Go. All right. Good evening. You know, I came in here tonight to blast on the chief, but I'm not going to. But I will bring something up to your attention, chief. Um, Mr. Uh, Jung, I will remind you, though, that... I can't... I, I'm just the, making a comment. The public comments should be directed to your city council. Okay, and I'm addressing this to you because this concerns the, I guess it's what, what is it called, the uh, Public Safety or Awareness Month or whatever we're going into, which is a great thing because you know what? You know, Chief, or Council, you know, our officers are not doing their jobs. You have a lieutenant by the name of Serrano, who leaves on Tuesdays Sir, and Thursdays. Sir, the personal tax need to, be, to stay at a minimum, please? The rules of this council uh, indicate there will be no personal attacks. I'm not making an attack, am I? Did I say anything? I must state facts right now. This lieutenant leaves on Tuesdays and Thursdays to go work at IVC. That's not an attack. That's a fact. You could check it online. He takes his black, he takes his unmarked unit to IVC to teach and get a second check. That's not an attack, that's a fact. I have pictures of it. He's leaving the city. When the chief in the past has said he's short-staffed, that's a fact. It's not an attack, okay? I'm stating facts, not attacks. So don't correct me, correct yourself. So if he leaves the city, at 2.30, 3 o'clock to teach at IVC. What benefit does the city of Calexico see from this? There's increased crime. Another fact is that merchants are getting broken into every day. Yet, we all have driven by this place, Payless Shoe Store, on 98 and 111. The windows are broken. Broad daylight. Where is the police? We have a lieutenant leaving this place at 2.30, but yet we're short-staffed, which is a fact, to go teach. Look it up on the, on, the, on, the, on the website. So what's going on, Chief? Why do you let your lieutenant leave here earlier or flex his schedule, whichever way it may be, but at the same time, you're leaving us short-handed? You know, is it okay for any other city staff to leave early to go work at a second job and withdraw a second check? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Jung, if you can address the city council, oh, not, not indiv oh, individuals. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Times. I'm just, uh, let's say I put that question out there to the universe so the general council can answer that maybe or be aware of it. I don't think Ms. Acosta can leave at, or if I may say her name, I don't think she can leave at 1 o'clock to go work at Walmart. As a greeter, hey, Mr. Jung, or, if you could please wrap that up. Okay, I don't think it's fair to the citizens, and you guys fired officers for the same thing in the past. So I hope you guys investigate this. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Next person is uh, Mr. Manuel Yanez. Oh no, no, that's for number eleven. Uh, Alex Peroni. Public comment. You wanted public comment, right, Mr. Peroni? Honorable Mayor and Honorable City Council. Um, 
my, my question today is that I'd like to know status. Uh, we invested close to 800,000 in police cameras. And with crime increasing in Calexico and acts of terrorism throughout the United States, I think it'd be time that we look in to these cameras that cost us $800,000 and activate them. You know, our chief is low in staff, and you know, cameras can be you know, eyes and ears for us, and uh, it's something that we have to look into. And uh, is anybody looking into it, Armando, uh, Mayor, on those cameras that we had installed? Are they, are they just installed to do nothing? Like, I know that we, we, we had, had a conversation a, about this issue. We had a presentation last, at the yeah, last city council meeting about the camera program. You didn't come program. that day. <laughs> no. But if you like, maybe instead of re reiterating all of that, maybe you might want to ask. Uh, no, so we, we are looking into it. Uh, there was it. conversations on that. There's table. conversations. It's being addressed. Okay, good. Uh, because it's, it's going to address, you know, shorthanded, uh, the crime that we're coming up in, you know, acts of terrorism. Also, uh, while I'm up here, uh, we own a property on Highway 98, and uh, We've been uh, put in a situation because we had an entrance on Highway 98, and now with the expansion of Highway 98, they took away the entrance of that property, being that the entrance will solely be through the alley. So it's an inconvenience for the people living on that property because, you know, it does rain in Calexico, even though we have warm weather all year, but we get rains. So just imagine the mud to go into that uh, uh, property. Is the city going to uh, pave that alley? And I'll, I'll give you what specific property is. It's right in front of the warehouse. It's sandwiched in between Rios Auto Sales and uh, Loli Torres' property. So they both have entrances, but we don't and it's gonna be canceled, and uh, you know, we are concerned. As far so, as I understand, that's Highway 98, and that would be Caltrans jurisdiction, is that correct, Mr. Dale? And yeah, so, but the alley is uh, the uh, city. You might wanna address something like that with Mr. Dale. Have you met Mr. Dale already? No, Our I haven't. New, um, public Works Director? I see him running around everywhere, but yeah, I don't know who really he is. he's really busy. <laughs> yeah, okay, so uh, I'll uh, schedule a, a meet with... Uh, I think that would probably be the best. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome, I hope that works out. Already, Senor Castro, Luis Castro, por favor. Next. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Me da gusto mirarlos a cada uno de ustedes. De veras, siento un placer estar aquí con ustedes. Eh, estamos aquí de regreso después de 10 meses que estuve ausente. Um, mi mi uh, preocupación es um, que diario pasan miles de personas de Mexicali hacia Caléxico. Somos una ciudad, somos una frontera. Y estas personas vienen a comprar, vienen a, a estudiar, vienen a trabajar. Son miles de personas que cruzan. Y desafortunadamente, los baños por la calle Primera ya tienen dos meses que no están trabajando. Eh, estamos hablando de que cruzan miles de personas. Estas personas um, batallan para cruzar, duran una hora y media, dos horas para cruzar. Y lo mínimo que van a hacer al cruzar es ir al baño. No hay baños en la ciudad. En el, en el pueblo y eso me preocupa a mí como, como uh, ciudadano, como hombre de negocios. Eh, la economía en Caléxico está muy baja y lo menos que podemos hacer nosotros es atender a la gente que viene de afuera, la gente que nos visita, la gente que nos deja impuestos. Um, también vienen ahí los uh, snowbirds, que ahorita están en Yuma. Se estacionan en el tourist parking que tenemos ahí por la primera. Y uh, pues sí tenemos tourist parking. Llegan al downtown de Calexico, cruzan a Mexicali, pero no hay servicio de baños. 
Mi pregunta es, ya, ya tienen más de dos meses cerrados los baños en el, en el pueblo. Uh, me preocupa. Yo le estoy diciendo esto a varios de colegas que fueron míos, que ellos ya saben. Uh, Pacheco, usted ya estuvo aquí en el canso. Um, todos han estado aquí, la mayoría excepto Escobar. Este problema es viejo, pero es bien importante, bien importante porque cómo nosotros como ciudad vamos a recibir a gente de por fuera, es algo muy delicado. So, esa es mi uh, preocupación como ciudadano y como hombre de negocios, que tenemos que cuidar lo que es la área del downtown. Es todo y gracias y sinceramente me da gusto verlos a cada uno de ustedes. Con permiso. Gracias, señor. Mayor, quick comment, Mayor. Quick comment. Of course. Uh, muchas gracias. Uh, Mr. Villa, echoing on, on, uh, on what Mr. Castro said, as we know, there is a hepatitis A outbreak in San Diego. And the last thing that we need is a hepatitis A outbreak in Calexico. Oh, and we know there's a homeless issue in Calexico. I think it's important that we look into the sanitation measures that we're taking up on our, um, on our public restrooms. It's, it's extremely important that we avoid the issues that are happening in San Diego. And again, we have a, a homeless problem here in Calexico as well. So we need to be careful with that. Thank you. Yes. One more, one more comment? Algo que se me pasó y es bien importante. Just because you never visit us. Quiero aprovechar que, uh, como comentó Renison, va a haber una junta con el uh, POA, con el uh, US Custom. Creo que escuché eso. Mi recomendación es eh, lo que es uh, tiempo navideño aquí. Las filas son muy largas. Entonces, uh, mi, mi recomendación, y yo le pido a usted, Mayor, que si por favor um, visita al director de aduanas, al de US Customs, y que ayude a facilitar las largas filas. Anteriormente ya se hizo, otros mayores lo hicieron, yo lo hice con Billy Whitford y el señor respondió, ayudó como unos seis meses y después dejó porque... Todas las agencias ahorita tienen problemas, todo el mundo, el gobierno federal, el estado, el municipal, todos tenemos problemas, pero si no pedimos nosotros, ellos no nos van a hacer, no nos van a tomar en cuenta. Sí. Si usted va mayor, creo que la van a tomar en cuenta. Así es. Gracias. Igualmente. Uh, mayor, Gracias one quick usted. comment. Sí, Carlos. Sí. Uh, señor Castro, y para la comunidad, hay, hay juntas cuatrimestrales. Eh, por lo general son en el Carmen Durazo Art Center o aquí en City Hall, se juntan los administradores de la aduana de Mexicali y los administradores y subadministradores de la aduana americana de Estados Unidos de Caléxico con eh, los, lo que son sus proveedores, ¿no? o los que le prestan servicios, agentes aduanales, eh, compañía de transporte y el público en general. Entonces están bienvenidos a esas juntas y son cuatrimestrales y por lo general se me hace que una nomás ha sido en Mexicali, las mayorías son en Caléxico, por lo general en, en Carmen Durazo Art Center, Art, Culture Art Center, o aquí en City Hall. Son cuatrimestrales, no, no tengo la fecha, pero son cuatrimestrales. No, that, that, that's, a, that's Simba, that's a different, that's a different one, John. Did you say 1023? Lo que voy a hacer es le voy a mandar un correo a Armando Villa para que lo ponga en la página de, de la ciudad de Caléxico. Okay. And anyone else that wants to join in these different meetings that have a lot to do with the uh, strategies and the structuring of what we're doing with our border, mm. please let our city council or our city manager know you'd like to, to know those dates. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Castro. You brought up very important stuff. Uh, Jordana Selwick, did you leave? Oh, there you are. Jordana's next. Good to see you. And good to see Mr. Selwick over there. Don't fall asleep, Mr. Selwick. I think the mayor and I are almost twins today in our choice. <laughs> Um, good evening. It's been many years that I've been up here, and um, when I heard someone come up a minute ago, one of the people that got up, they said it was Public Safety Awareness Month. 
this month, and I didn't know that, so that made me fill in a little paper a little bit late, and I want to bring something up to the City Council. And I have, um, I think, spoken to probably six or seven people about this. Seven months ago, I had an incident at my home on CN Perry uh, that was reported to the police department. Happened again. Since then, I have put cameras, an elaborate security system in my home, and have taken the responsibility upon myself to make your, sure we're safe. Um, I made a complaint, a formal complaint to the police department, was interviewed by a detective, Seja, by uh, Lieutenant Gerardo. Uh, I think he's a lieutenant or sergeant, Serrano. Um, and all the police officers that showed up on my home on the, sec the night of the second incident, the incident was a young man with schizophrenia came into my home, obsessed with my daughter, had Facebook pages, Instagram pages dedicated to her, that he was married to her, that she was a holy virgin, that there was gonna be a ceremony that was having a lot of mental issues and the problem is not the kid at all. The problem is that the second time that he showed up to my home, there was six 911 calls made. Two from my phone, one from my sister's phone, one from the young man Jay that's standing over there, another one from another gentleman, and those six 911 calls were placed in a matter of 53 minutes and nobody showed up to my house. When the police finally came, the police officer, and I wish I could remember his name, I think it's Hernandez, was very nice, very understanding, and I was very upset if you can imagine. We were holding the young man on the public sidewalk and my house is very set deep inside CM Perry. It's not on the street itself. We were holding him, he was very compliant, but he had still walked into my home where there was a 16-year-old girl by herself with my father who was there at the time. I, I witnessed all this from across the street. When the police officer saw how upset I was, he said if I wanted to speak to the sergeant. They called the sergeant, the sergeant took about two minutes to get from the police department to see him Perry, which is probably pretty normal. And what the police sergeant told me that night is the reason I stood up today. He told me they were busy doing a shift change. And that's why they did not respond to six different 911 calls with a young man being held at my home for over 50 minutes. Then the young man wanted to go on a 5150. And the police officer, uh, sergeant, not officer, Marquez said that it was after 6 p.m and that it was a Friday that night, and that, I guess social service, I don't know what department it would be, was closed for the weekend. I called the El Central Hospital, excuse me, and they said they take people in and they hold them. So the reason I'm getting up here is to let you know, I have spoken on many occasions to the different police officers involved, and I've gotten the runaround because I want an explanation as to how can in a city of Calexico you take 53 minutes to respond when there's an intruder in your house, inside your house. And the last answer I got from Officer Serrano, I'm sorry, I don't know his exact title, was we have a year to answer. It's been seven months. And I don't think it's right because I hardly ever call the police department. I don't come to your meetings. I don't, I like everybody, I don't know whose police officer is who. And I'm not demanding anything else someone would, what I'm, is I want an answer. I want to know why he told me that in my face. We were in a shift change. So in that time, my daughter could have been raped, my father could have been beaten over the head with it. I'm sitting on a car across the street, terrified, not knowing what's going on. Should I stay there? And at this time, all these people come to our help and hold someone down for 53 minutes? Okay. So that's my public comment is, if it's Public Safety Awareness Month, I would like the city council to be aware that your police department, for whatever reason it is, decided to take a 53 minute break when there was a man inside my house. And 
four different people called to let them know. I really wish, happening. Jordana, that we could actually respond. But because, I understand. Yeah. That's why I know it's a public comment. I'm commenting to let you know, to let the public know, do not count on a reliable police department because I've chased them down. I also recommend okay. that yes. you have an opportunity to have a conversation with our chief who's here. I don't. Today. He could have come to me. He knows that I put the formal complaint in. I'm sure he's read Seja's report, Gerardo's report, everybody's report. They could have called me. He could have called me in at any time and asked me. Maybe he doesn't know about it. Now he knows. Now it's in the hands of the collect city of Calexico because oh, I no longer have faith in the police department. I'm going to call Border Patrol next time someone comes into my house because they'll show up right away. I'll Thank make sure you. to help you to address. Thank you. Thank you, Jelena. Okay, next is, okay, so I think that's it on the public comments, no more. With that. Now we're gonna continue on with the city council comments and reports of meeting attended. So we'll start to my right. Mr. Escobar, would you like to do any reporting? Um, the last public comment was a little shocking. Uh, Mr. Villa, could we get uh, an update on that once you do some due diligence? Please, thank you. Um, I'll, uh, this might be a city manager's uh, report for maybe for next time, uh, or maybe something we should place on the agenda. I'll leave it open-ended. I would like an update on our, our street sweeper, how we're doing on that. I know I saw it a, about a month ago and I was pleasantly surprised. I wanna follow up on that. I wanna also get an update. Uh, we do have a new public works director, Mr. David Dale. I would like an update on our uh, capital improvements uh, plan. It's a huge undertaking, I believe it's $60 million, and I, would, I think it behooves us to get an update as to where we stand and, and uh, how we're progressing. Uh, I know something's brewing with the employee recognition and years of service awards. I think it's important. Employee morale is uh, non-existent, and our community as a whole is dissatisfied. I think this is a step in the right direction, and I know something is brewing, but we could get an update on employee recognition and uh, years of service awards. Um, there's a, I, I was driving by Imperial Avenue and I noticed that there's a, uh, a business. It's, it's basically an open air auto shop. It's got tire racks, exposed tires. Uh, I, I'm 99.9% .9 sure there's city ordinances established that don't allow that, be it open air uh, auto shops or, or tires. They pose significant uh, health risks for our community. So you could look into that as well. And lastly, um, I'm going to be a big proponent moving forward of this. There's two major league investments in our community. The port of entry and the widening of Cesar Chavez and uh, Highway 111. There's no way in heck we cannot avoid this opportunity, or we can avoid this opportunity and not invest in our city aesthetics. Our city is not pretty, it's not beautiful. Whether I love it or not, that's a whole different story. But it's not beautiful, it's not nice, it's not something you drive to look at. And we need to do something about that. I know we are extremely tight on our cash. I'm a member of the Calexico Rotary and I'm gonna speak on behalf of my Rotary Club. I'm more than happy to adopt the road. And I'm speaking on behalf of my Rotary Club. And I think there's other people. I support I believe, you, Escobar. I believe Mr. Real mentioned this at the last meeting. I, I know there's you. people that would be willing to adopt it. I know we can go into low water usage, desert landscapes, et cetera. But this is extremely important moving forward because of these major um, investments in our community. And I know you're an urban planner. I know you're looking into it. I just want to stress that it's extremely important to me and to our community. Um, I'll hold off on the rest. Thank you. Just a couple. Um, it's on our, one of our agenda items is that we're gearing up for our uh, 110th uh, the anniversary and we had a brief meeting with the Chamber of Commerce and they were uh, I think willing to share and cooperate and help with uh, some planning and I think that's going to come up later on uh, on the agenda. I noticed that there's a lot of a uh, lot of lights that are uh, have dark corners the lights are out especially on my corner Rockwood and Knight for one but we have a lot of lights out in the city and I don't want to say which one but they cost money, but we need to be proactive and make sure we have lights for our, for our citizens when we walk, walk in the evening. Um, 
than that, I'm good. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Sure. <clears throat> um, I want to start off by um, saying that this horrible tragedy that happened in Las Vegas, I hope we can all have um, all those people in our prayers, in our minds, and um, it's, it's really sad to see that there's that type of evil out in this world, um, and it's a very sad situation that, uh, that has happened there, and I, I hope we never see it in our um, neck of the woods, but uh, again, we'll, we'll never, those things don't, uh, don't call you up and say they're coming, so um, being that um, public safety has a lot to do with it, you know, it is, uh, it is a city council's responsibility um, to maintain the public safety of our community, and uh, it's, 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 we've, we've gone through a lot these last couple of years. Um, we used to have over 40 officers, we're probably down to 20 now, so our or less, I don't, I don't know, but our PD has shrunk in half. That's the reality, and uh, has to do with budget issues and um, mismanagement of of the budgets in the past. That's a reality. Now we're paying for it, but um, I'm hopeful that uh, the future looks looks better. I, I think it will, but that's just the situation we have to work with for now. Um, as far as uh, I, I echo um, uh, Mr. Pacheco's comments on the lights, um, I know that that's a IID issue, so our city really shouldn't uh, have a burden for lights out as far as uh, street lights. I believe those are IID, correct? S some that are missing? Okay. So IID, and I know uh, our public works director will get on that. I know that that's, when it comes to public safety, having good street lights and, and the camera systems and all those things, I know they don't do us justice for missing 20 officers, but but at least uh, they're going to help. It's going to help out a little bit, hopefully, our chief and our, our police department. Um, something that was brought up by um, Mrs. Padilla, which wasn't here as far as the hep, hep, uh, hepatitis A outbreak in, in San Diego, and now it looks like there's a few cases in Imperial County. You know, as a city strapped for cash and, and, and our budget issues that we have, um, downtown is a major, downtown is, I, I'm going to say is the area where most of our homeless tend to um, congregate. And uh, we do have a, a bid. We have a, a business improvement district that in the past used to use some of their funds to have a, uh, um, a, uh, a business that was cleaning downtown. And uh, that's something maybe we should go to the bid as soon as possible and say, hey, you know, we need this help with, with cleaning downtown. I know they, they used to spend those monies. And last but not least, um, just uh, say a big shout out to everybody that came from Mr. Navarro's class. And hopefully you guys uh, get good grades on your uh, report there and say hi to him for me. So thanks for coming, guys. George? Uh, three items. Number, number one, Mr. City Manager, um, a strong suggestion, you know, because we might have a PR problem here with the police department, uh, that, that if you could speak to our, uh, our chief of police about the two issues that were raised today in, in public, inquire about what's going on, that is a concern. Uh, I'm determined to, the other second one is, I'm determined to collaborate with the city council and Calexico Unified School District to make sure that our community pool will be open at least three months during the summer of 2018. I know we have to get our house in order, but I see it as a priority. The uh, quote unquote state of the art pool that roughly cost $7 million should at least be open for three months for the community at least. The public deserves this. Families and children must have access to the pool. Therefore, I hope that the city council will see this as a main strategy or a goal for our community, and we can work on it any, any way that we can. Uh, good to see that we have on the agenda for discussion potential actions number nine approve the list of projects for funding under the road maintenance and rehabilitation account, SB1. Just as a reminder, but I know you're on top of it, that uh, the due date is October 20th to get that list in. And uh, I do strongly echo 
Mr. Escobar's uh, concern about beautification and aesthetics in this city. Once again, it's not just for its sheer beauty, but uh, it brings in it, its economic incentive also. When you beautify a city, people want to come here and live and shop and so forth. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hodge. <clears throat> I, we're going to um, be having a really busy month for the month of October. October is obviously Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I'm happy to say I'm a 15-year survivor. So for me, it's really important, my birthday month too. So There's going to be a lot going on again this month. Uh, this Saturday, we'll be having the uh, Pretty in Pink event by the Chamber of Commerce and our Community Services Department. That'll be at the Carmen Durazo um, um, center <laughs> and it's men and women actually but it is really nice event uh, recognizing and um, bringing um, awareness to breast cancer and it'll be a really nice event like we have we've been doing this for about five years now uh, we do also a lot of events during October with the city of Mexicali there's another group out there called Mujeres Que Viven so we collaborate with them as well the Hefferton Memorial District is very involved in those activities uh, so we see a lot of that being uh, coming up here pretty soon so we invite you all to that um, we also have something coming up tomorrow, which um, the uh, city manager, Mr. Villa, and I have talked a lot in the council as well as, as far as the city hosting a lot more of these very important meetings that go on throughout the county and uh, with Mexicali. So tomorrow's meeting, if you guys are hearing meetings back and forth and by national, we're doing that a lot, and we're supposed to do that a lot. And so tomorrow is one of those, and it's, the, um, it's called the Imperial Valley. <laughs> there you go, IMBA. And uh, we usually will meet on that side or this side. And this year, this month, I'm sorry, we were, um, we were happy to host. And so we'll be doing that tomorrow. People who are interested in those types of, types of talk, topics, that how we're working together with Mexicali, are welcome to attend. Starts at 10 o'clock at the uh, um, Cultural Arts Center. The other that we have here is another that uh, the council has been given here on their desk is um, Thursday, October the 26th. That's another event that the city will host. And that's a really important event for city, city um, councils. It's called the League of California Cities. And what that is is where all the different city councils, managers, and different administration of different cities throughout the county get together and collaborate and, and share. And Calexico hasn't hosted that in a really long time, too. And the fact that Calexico is hosting stuff, I know there's still a lot to do. Uh, but the fact that we are hosting and we are getting now a lot more opportunities to be able to bring other people to this city is on purpose <coughs> and it's by design. Uh, we are now trying to have that happen more for economic reasons, reasons why we brought Mr. Figueroa. And so this will be a really nice event for um, for all of us as, as council because we, we do want to host that once in a while and show what Calexico does have to offer. So I understand we're going to have somebody cater a local restaurant to be able to eat their great food and show other cities that we have good stuff here too. So that's uh, another very important meeting. I just got something from the Heffernan board and it says here, oh, this, this was something we talked about at the beginning, which is the first annual health fair. And that's scheduled for October the 21st, a Saturday at Rockwood Park. And that looks like it starts from nine o'clock and ends at two. And there'll be exhibitors. Is there opportunities for exhibitors? Yes, there's opportunities. So anybody who wants any flyers here, you want to help me to distribute to the, you guys? And then after that, there's going to be a few more there left. If not these also, we'll put them out in the front. Okay. The other thing that I really want to tell you guys about is um, a meeting that I did have just recently, which was a huge, uh, huge, huge um, event. I'm not going to say huge necessarily, but important and impactful. Uh, we had the Mexicali mayor um, organize a, a very important conference, he called it a summit, and what he did is that he gathered the all mayors of Imperial County. We had Calexico, El Centro, Imperial, and Brawley. And we also had individual uh, cities cut from Yuma, San Luis, and it, so all mayors came around to Mexicali, he hosted us, we, he took us to, uh, to the different uh, areas that Mexicali has as far as a, uh, a, um, a, <laughs> Uh, an Imba? No, wait. I forgot the name. Anyhow, uh, we did a lot of the uh, the economic development style uh, work in, in Mexicali and had meetings where we discussed the different issues that are happening right now. One of those primary issues is the port of entry and the fact that Mexicali does recognize that they're not ready yet. Uh, this was the mayor's office. It wasn't necessarily the other agencies that are doing the actual building, but uh, they're equally as frustrated. 
but I believe that what we were doing in this one meeting here and, and this style of summit was that uh, all members feel that, especially right now, as you said, uh, Councilman Real, that there is so many different tragedies going on right now. And of course, when a tragedy occurs here locally, we will shut down that border, most likely. So if that does occur, how do these different um, representatives work together in order to make sure that the flow of life and business and, and all that that we have here on the border maintains as normal as possible throughout tragedies? And, and also to be able to uh, work together to manage and, and address the different things that'll happen in, in, in those events. Hopefully it doesn't happen. However, what we feel is that strengthening the four, the four states together will give us much more power and, and the unity to, to address actually many different issues. So as far as what uh, occurred on that day, the future tasks that are going to be set here is that we will have our police chiefs having um, meetings as far as the four different locations. Uh, our different um, economic development uh, individuals will also be meeting. So basically what we're doing is tying all of these very important departments of our cities on that side and, and in Arizona together so that we can have all of that um, coincide in, in the needs that we have as a region. That was important because we also um, collaborated with San Diego and San Diego had something very similar to where they wanted to connect all the mayors and have all this working together situations. However, locally we feel that Mexicali, Arizona and, and the Valley have much more common things in common weather, agriculture, things like that. So we were really excited about this uh, work that occurred. He gave us a really nice uh, opportunity to see Mexicali and, and how he promotes or they promote their city. You learn a lot from that kind of economic development promotion, uh, especially for a city that large and how they've grown comparison to our, our small city. So that was a really uh, interesting opportunity. We will be um, hosting them here pretty soon, about six months, Mr. V. I haven't told you that bit. <laughs> but um, we'll be making sure that we're prepared for them as well, have some nice stuff uh, ready for them, kind of coinciding with the fact that we're still going towards also the 110th anniversary and, and a couple of ideas that are out there for that. So it's been a busy week for the council, for the staff. Uh, we're not ever probably going to get close to perfect here because there's just so much to do but just know that we are working really hard and that you have a council that is, is anxious to get a lot of work done and new staff that we brought here again on purpose and by design to ensure that this team is, is the ultimate team that Mr. Villa wants for this city to, to move forward. Very good. So I want to thank you very much to everybody. It was a long moment here of presentations and, and speakers, but all of that is really healthy dialogue for all of us. Thank you. Mayor, so, can I add yes, one sir. thing? <clears throat> I totally totally forgot, but I had a meeting um, prior to the council meeting with uh, Angel um, Esparza, and it looks like we are um, very close to finalizing the date for um, hopefully our first and not our last um, uh, Tamal Festival for uh, this year, which oh, is wow. going to be hopefully our, our signature uh, food festival in the city. I know most cities have their... Um, uh, what is it, tri-tip and all those things, but uh, it's going to be held at Grand Plaza, and they're they're helping organize it as well, and, and, and we hope that it be something that City of Calexico do together with uh, Grand Plaza and um, for many years to come. So Very good. Um, that's something, it looks like December 4th is the date, so just want to, anybody that's uh, interested in helping out, we definitely need help, so um, uh, you guys can contact the city or uh, Grand Plaza for, for that as well, so thank you. All righty. That's it. Manager's right. report. We're going to move on then to um, the next section of our agenda, which is discussion and potential action items. No. Manager's report. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Madam oh, you Mayor. really wanted a report? You don't want a report today, do you? All righty. Well, I don't have a report right now. <laughs> no. Sure? You, you guys said I'm plenty you. already. You gave me a lot of homework. <laughs> <laughs> You're speechless. All righty. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, for reminding me. Um, discussion and potential action items. First item on is item number six, the establishment. Oh, we have the consent, consent agenda. items. The consent oh. agenda. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Do we have any Can I read questions? It? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, all right, consent agenda uh, items number four and number five. May I please have a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. I am motion by Mr. Hodge, second by Mr. Real. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion passed. Item passed. Okay, discussion and potential items. 
Item number six, establishment of protocol for coordinating the city of Calexico 110th anniversary celebration in 2018, including oversight and budgetary parameters. Parameters. Apparently, um, we were going to have a conversation today to see, we have a lot of ideas, everybody has a bunch of ideas. Next year uh, in April, we will be celebrating as a city 110 years, so we want to be able to, of course we don't have budget, very much money here to do this, but a lot of ideas. So the, the idea here tonight, gentlemen, is to open up some conversation and see what you guys would like to, to do to handle the actual logistics of, of getting this done. Um, there's a lot of ideas that I've heard already for some members of the community. Part of it, for example, is like presenting a part of the wall that we would be removing or the Border Patrol will be removing after the uh, replacement. Uh, maybe having the actual venue be um, the De Anza Hotel, for example, because the De Anza Hotel is such a historical part of our city. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, one time we brought in um, many of our uh, athletic teams, and we recognized them. Another year, we brought in uh, 100 uh, centennial residents of Calexico. We celebrated that way. So if you guys have any ideas, um, I think that this is what we're going to do. Yeah, wh what I wanted to, to invite the council to have some open dialogue on, on the extent of, of the involvement. Obviously, you know, if you would, if you would wanted to, to do it right now, as a, as a council, you could. But I, would, I was recommending that perhaps you can discuss the possibility of having a, a subcommittee mm -hmm. yes. of, of maybe two council members and then run through that subcommittee most of the decision makings, uh, you know, as to the program, as to the dates, as to, you know, uh, what funding opportunities we can, we can look for and stuff like that. For We still have plenty of time, so just wanted to kind of open that up. I, I would, um, I, I, I believe that's a great idea having a subcommittee and a committee as well from the public. Um, I just, I just uh, would like to say on my end, um, because of the budget issues, you know, we, we probably um, want to look for uh, other, other funds. And, and I can tell you from already speaking to uh, several businesses, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're definitely willing to help uh, with this. You know, there's, uh, you know, we can have budget issues, but Calexico is a city that, you know, uh, we, 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 we give, we help our own. So I know that we can figure out a way to find funds without, um, without the city taking on that burden. Uh, and that committee could definitely help with that. So um, uh, I'm, I'm definitely in, in, in favor of uh, getting that subcommittee going and, and hopefully uh, moving forward. I do have a question, though, Mr. Villa. Um, would the 110th anniversary be on the same day that we're going to have the... Um State of the city address? Are we going to combine could, those two could things? Could be. Could be separate. Because that's the way we've yeah. done it before. On that day. Uh-huh. We, we did the state of the city, and then we had a cake and the recognition of these. Combine it? Thought? Would that's you guys, guys want to do both yeah. things the same day? I think that what works is it out. Then? Uh, remember that there's two different things. It's your celebration of your... Whatever is cheaper. And then your state of address. State well, of the city. Let's, let's let these committee members kind of... Decide, decide that, those yeah. issues, and we don't want to decide for um, them. We, we can I'll, invite the public too to to join. I mean, we've got several people that want to oh, yeah. ask to help. Yeah. yeah, Madam as Mayor. As far as uh, no, as far yeah. as go ahead. Um, the subcommittee, do should we pick that now? Can I can I just say something really? The the community actually is bringing out some pretty awesome ideas. They they we have some individuals who have already approached that have done the different uh, celebrations in the past, and they have said, for example, yeah, like they'll yeah. sell they'll uh, obtain I, I really nice flags family. to hang around like on Imperial Avenue, mm -hmm. and they would sell the flag to the family that wanted to purchase the flag, and that would be a way to, to fundraise. Mm -hmm. So definitely, there's got to be there's a lot of creative yes. ideas about fundraising opportunities. So mm -hmm. not to have to rethink it all, but. Um, Definitely be able to get those ideas from the public themselves. So, but I think we also need to to cap and say, uh, I mean, it's, we're we're in we're in constraint in the budget. So if we come up with what do you think is a fair amount of money, we don't want to, uh, you know, we're in the hole as it is. So maybe we can come up with something that is, and then get donations. And, but we need to put something up, but not. Yeah. What did, what did we spend on it last year? I, I, 500000 no, Not, not very much, but I think we, we, what we can do is we can probably go out to the community 
the merchant community to see how much money we can mm -hmm. raise for yeah. this thing. And if we get to the point where we may need additional monies, like we can come back to the council and see if there's any opportunities for the council to vote on that. Okay. And moving forward with what <clears throat> Mr. Villa is saying, let the ad hoc committee decide and bring it back to the council. Correct. What the, what the budget should be, I, what you I, can do. I really, do. I really doubt that, that, that the city will have to pay. I, I know that the community will come together for come it, forward. I'm sure. Yeah. I have three, and just whoever's on the subcommittee, I have three businesses already okay. waiting to donate, so, yeah. Madam Mayor, I'd like to throw my hat in there in the ring, be part of the throw subcommittee. Your hat in there, huh? <clears throat> I don't wear hats, but I would, just a I would motion to have anybody on the subcommittee other than Mr. Bill Hodge. I'm sorry, Mr. Hodge. It's <laughs> 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 It's a legitimate motion, so. Oh, I know they are. A little bit. Just okay, a little so. bit. So we're not going to be mean to Mr. Hodge. We're going to allow him to. <laughs> I'm tough skin. I can take it, especially from this kid. <laughs> You're on council, Mr. Hodge. Okay, so um, all kidding aside, you guys want to do that? Where um, I would like to do that too, as well, if we could have myself. No, and Mr. no more Hodge, than two. Like. That's fine. That we'll, we'll we'll nominate Mr. Hodge and the mayor to, to be on the committee, and I'll second and they that. Can work with uh, subcommittees. Okay. So I'll you're second that. First, we're not going to tell Pacheco Mondo anything. Mr. Pacheco, second by Mr. Villar, to appoint a, a subcommittee for the 110th anniversary. Uh, which would consist of myself and Mr. Bill Hodge from the council. And as far as the committee for the community, how would we want to be able to handle that part? I think we have a volunteer, I assume. Mr. No? Mimptel? Maybe do a little call out Mr. and just, I, just start running the word where everybody can start to participate? Or? Hello, Tony Pimentel. Uh, I just want to say that I was on the 98, 99, 100 committee. And for the 100th anniversary party was like about $24,000. So you're looking at that one okay. for one event. That was a gala. Yeah, the gala. Not sure um, about that. I'm sure there won't be a, a shortage of people that want to be involved, I'm sure. No, vamos a los raspados. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. I strongly suggest that we invite John Renison. He's had the experience, too. Sure, as a community part. Mm -hmm. As a community. Sure. He's, he, he was already on the list. And there are a lot of others. Of course. You can bring 5,000 well, bucks there's, with there's you. There's going to be a lot of, uh, of, of, of interest. So what, per, what parameters should we put on the public interest? Is just anybody to come on over and join? It's a community event, yeah. Why not? Right. Your contacts. Mm -hmm. yeah, everybody's already. Yeah. Okay, so, so what if Madam we do Mayor, this? So what if we do this? What if those individuals by this uh, can pay for city it? council meeting and this, and this um, statement, anyone who would be interested in, in participating and helping from the public in our 110th anniversary planning, please let Mr. Uh, Villanueva, city manager, and he'll direct you to our meetings. Yep. Perfect. We didn't need to take a vote. <clears throat> we didn't vote. We need to, we we need to vote, vote on, on Mr. The, Hodge on and the mayor. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. No, I did. I, said I made no. the motion. First, on First second, but we never voted. Okay. Oh. And second on Mr. Um, aye. All those aye. in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Thanks, guys. All righty. <clears throat> so, again, we're okay with the way that we'll handle the public? Yeah? Anybody who would like to be able to? So it's, it's, a, it's a community event. So we really want to. What, what I envision is probably we'll, we'll have a, a, our first meeting, and we'll put it on our website, and then we'll, we'll spread the word so that we, we'll, we'll have it here. That way we can start brainstorming ideas how to, how to get this thing going, and we'll invite Mr. Renison. Is the council okay with that? Alrighty. Thank you, Mr. Renison. Okay. <clears throat> then uh, moving on to item number seven, general fund update. You guys want to do that one now? Yeah. Okay. Here There's no go. public comments. Oh, there is. I'm sorry. Should I do public comments now or afterwards? We, let, let's go ahead and receive their, the report, the staff report, and then we'll open it up for comments. Thanks. There's only one anyway. I'm going to go yes, watch Mr. it from down. So me. Yeah, me too. What's happened? Are we ready to commence? 
That's a big word. Uh, I think um, I think we just decided to take a two-minute <laughs> recess. So, well, poor Mrs. Meyer. Okay. All right. Two minutes. Yeah, let's make it short. Stay. Stay in this. I didn't bring my pad. I totally forgot. But I probably closed the stage. Because you're saying you're going to have to check the other Or you want to do it now? No, no, I want to mind. It's just nothing. I just freak up my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be around here. Yeah. I'll go to the stage. That's going to be those. You know what? I should go. There's a photo. There's a photo. You're starting to get up. So we're going to go ahead and start. Okay. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. My name is Susan Mayer. I'm a financial consultant. I'm retained by the city to provide technical assistance to the finance staff. I'm here to present an update on the general fund, and this report tonight continues a practice from the past year of providing quarterly updates to the city council to inform them on their budget policy decisions. Um, the theme for tonight is that we are on track, and it was interesting that Council Member Pacheco asked the first speaker tonight, um, who, who is reporting on a CIP project, he asked, are you on track? And Mr. Pacheco, I'm here to tell you that yes, we are on track. We are on track with um, the city's path to fiscal recovery. We are on track with achieving our intended 2017 results. We are on track in closing the gap between our revenues and expenditures. We are on track in accelerating the delivery of financial information to you. It was March when we presented the 2016 results and here we are just six and a half months later giving you the 17 results. So your finance staff has really completed an entire year of an accounting in, in about seven months. Um, and finally, we are on track in starting to identify some of the solutions we need for 1718. So our theme tonight is good news. We are on track. Our objective tonight is to excuse me, Eduardo, could you forward the, the clicker isn't working here, is to provide you an update on the 16-17 year-end close for the general fund. And the scope tonight is limited to the general fund. The entire year-end close process takes about six months, and we have started on the general fund because that is the, the fund that has the discretionary money. It is the most important to the, to the city. The city has many other funds, including the utility funds, grant funds, housing funds, capital projects, those are all still in progress. Um, however, the general fund results are close to being finished because we have just received the last sales tax numbers for the year. So we're here um, to give you a report on the general fund. We are, this report is for information only. We are not asking the council to take any action um, at this time. We'll be back with the next quarterly report. Um, actually, the, your finance director will be back in two weeks with a report, uh, first quarter report for 1718. Um, again, that one will just be for information only. It will be January before we ask the council to consider budget amendments for the 17-18 fiscal year. So again, the scope tonight is to report on the year-end results for the general fund for 16-17. This is, this is a picture that really tells the story of where you have been and where you are today. And we have had three years where the expenditures for the city dramatically exceeded the revenues. 
and that's why you see a, revenue, a, a, a red line that far exceeds the green line with available revenues. The success story for 2016 is that we have closed the gap. Your revenues for 2016 and your, and your expenditures, um, have, the lines have come together. You have stopped the bleeding and you have stabilized your financial condition. And I just want to show you, again, the dramatic decline in expenditures of over $4 million over a two-year period of time. The city council, the city manager, the department heads, the, the, um, the employee associations, and the citizens have all made very painful decisions and um, contract concessions and reductions in services um, to achieve this. But the reality is, is that for the past three fiscal years, you were writing checks and providing services that you could not afford. You did not have the cash to support it. So today we are at the point where we have closed the gap. We um, have more work to do in the future, but for today, 16 and 17, if this is a report card on the success for the past year, the answer is we have met the task and closed the gap for 16 and 17. Just a, a few words on the revenues. And the answer here for 1617 is that there are no surprises. The, the actual sales tax and property tax, which are your largest sources of revenues that came in for the year, were very close to plan. You have good communication between your accounting staff and the county accounting staff that were able to really help be sure that the projections were on target with respect to the property taxes. So the end result is that you have a very stable $14 million a year revenue base. This past year, um, you were fortunate to receive a grant from the Heffernan District, as well as some proceeds from a one-time land sale that closed the gap and made up for some unachieved savings on, with the fire contract. Um, without that, you would not have been able to break even for the year. So um, again, with, with um, the contribution from the Heffernan District, you um, averted a problem there and were able to balance the budget. So the, the, the answer is for revenues, there is, is no news. The, the actuals have come in very close to projection. On the expenditure side, since the last projection, there have been about 200,000 initial savings as the departments really curtailed their spending through the last days of the fiscal year. And so we have a, a couple hundred thousand dollars of, of, of savings in the, the general fund on the operating expenditure side. As you look at this chart, again, this is another way to show um, how two years ago you were spending $19 million, and in the current past fiscal year you have dropped those, spent, those expenditures down to less than $15 million. And the cuts have been in every area, from employees, salaries, and benefits, from the number of employees and the rates being paid, operating costs, and other um, reductions as well. So this, again, was the result of um, significant focus by the city council, the city manager, department heads, and, and all the other stakeholders in this process. This has been a dramatic turnaround for the city's financial condition. I do want to mention that in, when we brought the May budget amendment to you, um, we relied on some um, rebates from the city's self-insurance programs. Since January of 2016, the city has been self-insured for workers' compensation and for general liability. The city has had a favorable claims trend since then, and because of that, we have been able to, um, we, we budget based on the actuary's um, estimates, but in, in both the workers' comp and the general liability programs, we have been able to rebate some of those back to the programs, again, reflecting the city's good work in controlling its, its claims. So where do we stand at the end of June 30? The last two slides talked about annual revenues and annual expenditures. So let's tie that together and say, what does our balance sheet look like at June 30? And I want to give you two measures of success, two measures. One is working capital. What is the city's general fund liquidity? When you look at current assets and liabilities, which is the cash in the bank, the receivables and the payables, um, this is the first year in several years we are actually ahead. We are very slightly ahead of zero, but you have a positive working capital for the year. When you look at the total fund balance, however, the city's general fund is still negative. A year ago, um, facing these unexpected financial reverses, the city had to borrow from its wastewater fund. It borrowed $3.5 million, and we made the first of those uh, five annual repayments in the 16-17 year, but there's still $2.8 owed on that loan. 
The good news is that you have a plan to retire it. The, the, char the bar chart here shows you how over the next four years, if you are able to adopt and maintain balanced budgets each year, you will pay off that loan and your fund balance will again re re revert to a positive situation. But as we sit today, the general fund balance is a negative 2.8 million because of that wastewater loan balance, which is 19% of expenditures. There's still work to do, um, but you have stopped the bleeding by balancing your current year revenues and expenditures. I want to um, respond to um, a request that one of the council members had made in an earlier meeting to, to continue um, moving towards a longer term financial plan. And to that extent, I've got a slide here that shows you what's coming ahead for the amortization of a number of long-term obligations. And when I say obligations, I'm talking about operating cost obligations. I'm not talking about the long-term bonds that the city has issued for capital. You have a Measure H bond, a Measure D bond. You have water revenue bonds. I'm not talking about the, the debt you have issued for capital. I'm talking about the debt that the city has accumulated for operating costs. And so we have four. I just want to reprise what these are. You've heard me speak about them in prior presentations, but I want to um, reprise what they are and present really new information that we have, both the, um, the retiree medical costs and the CalPERS pension costs have um, been updated with new actuary reports. And both of these actuary reports show the projected cash flow over the next series of years. So we've added together the wastewater loan that we've just talked about with payments over the next four years. We've added in the payments you owe to the JPA IA insurance pool for the retrospective charges that you still owe on, the, on that contract. And we've also added in the retiree medical and the CalPERS. And each of these is a different color on this bar chart. And so to support the city's long-term plan, we want to reemphasize how these obligations will continue over time. And so the current year, 17, 18, you can see that these um, items add up to just under $3 million. But the city needs to brace for ongoing increases in the retiree health and in the pension. The CalPERS pension is, is statewide news. The number, of re the, the number one reason for the increase in the, in the pension costs is the change in the actuarial discount assumption. CalPERS had made some um, assumption, actuarial assumption changes that is going to drive up these costs for you um, in, in the next few years and for all the other CalPERS agencies as well. The retiree health is an issue because the city has not set aside money to pay for this, this benefit. And so your payments are expected to double in this area as more and more of your employees retire and earn this benefit um, and, uh, uh, and incur th those claims. Um, and then the last item here is the JPA. So again, the purpose of this slide is to remind everybody we still have a number of operating costs. These are all present value costs for operation, operating costs that have been incurred in the past. These actual reports were as of June 2016, they're the present value of, of your obligations. And so um, we know that the city is hopeful that development opportunities and other, um, the, the cannabis revenues and other programs might start to turn the tide and bring in additional revenues. And as you consider and start to realize new revenues, um, we hope that the city council will keep an eye on these burgeoning operating cost obligations and, and um, address these um, and fund these as part of it, the longer term strategy. My final slide here tonight um, is just a brief update on 1718. When we adopted the 1718 budget, um, the revenues and expenditures did not balance, and a placeholder of 3.2 reduction targets um, was established. And so the work to do in the 1718 fiscal year is to close that gap. And so we're here to report on a couple of good steps that, that have been uh, already identified. The first good news is that the beginning fund balance is um, about 260,000 better than planned. Small amount, but we're glad to take you know, that initial step in closing that gap. 
We really don't have any information on revenues yet. The way that local government um, revenues come um, is really in a delayed mode. You won't get any sales tax information for the current year until December. And that's also when the county will be distributing the first property tax for the year. So we really are on hold on the revenue side. But there is some good news to report on the expenditure side. We have finished the first quarter of the year. We have added up the value of the positions that have been held vacant. And the city has achieved 400,000 in vacancy savings for the first quarter of the year. Now again, this is not without a cost. The cost is in lost service to the, to, to the community. Um, but in terms of achieving the, the placeholder target of 3.2 in budget savings for the year, we've, we've locked in the first 400,000 uh, because positions have been held vacant. The next um, item I'm very pleased to tell you about is a payment plan that has been negotiated with the JPIA insurance pool. Your city manager has reached out and made personal contact with the executive team at JPIA and was successful in negotiating a payment plan. We had a large lump sum payment that was going to be due this, uh, actually this past July, um, to, to cover some of the retrospective charges. The city had a large number of claims that were um, settled by the JPA, and the, because of their, their funding mechanism, they were allowed to charge those back to the city for the period of time that the city was a member of that pool. But um, with the strong negotiation by the city, the JPA board has formally approved a payment plan. The costs aren't reduced, but they are smoothed over years. And so the 17-18 the budget will benefit because we, we don't have to make that large lump sum payment in the 17-18 fiscal year. So there's good news there. Um, the, um, the, the city's finance director will be back um, at the next council meeting to present detailed expenditure reports um, on the rest of the general fund expenditure, but we wanted to show that there has been some progress in closing that 17-18 that budget gap. The last thing I'll mention here is just what's coming ahead in terms of the calendar. Um, today is October 4th, and we are giving you the preliminary general fund results. Now, these are not final results. I'm sure that the city will find some additional receivables that come in. There will be, probably be some additional bills that are presented for payment. Um, but we have a pretty good handle on what those general fund numbers are. Um, October 18th, um, we'll be back with the first quarter expenditure report for 1718. January 18th, we're scheduled to give you the second quarter budget report. And at that time, we'll start to introduce budget amendments to close that $3.2 million gap. Your audit is scheduled to take place in January and February, and we hope that the auditors will be here on March 7th with their final results for 1617. And then finally, we start to move into um, the um, closeout. We, we approach the end of the 1718 fiscal year and start the planning for the 1819 budget. So that's what your fiscal calendar, planning calendar, looks like for the year. And with these comments, I'm happy to take any questions that you have. I know you quite well in the past uh, year or so. Uh, Armando, it takes a lot of courage to step into the role you stepped into a little over a year ago, I believe 16 months ago, who's sitting more or less where Mr. Kim and Mr. Yanez are sitting at when uh, I heard the news and I was shocked. I'm happy that you're here and uh, the ship wasn't sinking. The ship was in the water. It was out. Basically, Floating. We're floating. <laughs> Eduardo, felicidades. Having said that, having said that, and Mayor, I, I didn't ask if I could, but I kind of went, uh, went forward on it. Um, while we're $6,000 above water, which is nothing, realistically, we're at zero. We have no rainy day fund. Our staffing levels across the board you name the department across the board, are at minimum standards at best. Our customer service levels, what the, the, the city of Calexico, the community perceives of us, I'm going to say they're low, and I'm going to avoid saying harsh words. They're low. Uh, we've made concessions with basically all the labor unions. So we're basically, um, we've cut it to a level where it's very hard for us to continue cutting. Yet. Our service levels, especially to our community, are low. 
and their, and their two-year agreements, which means after fiscal, after fiscal year 17, 18, which is our current fiscal year, uh, it's, it, again, it's open book. We go to the negotiating table again. Um, our unfunded liability is beyond belief. I mean, it goes from 1.5 in fiscal year 17, 18 to 3 million in fiscal year 24, 25. I, I don't know what to say about that. Thank you. Um, we have no rainy day fund. Right now we're looking at $6,000, yet we still have to budget for a $3.2 million gap. Again, uh, speechless. Um, we're self-insured. That's a double-edged sword. It's helped us out lately, but it's a double-edged sword. It could cost us significantly. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars it could cost us easily with one false swoop. So uh, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. Um, Armando, digo, Eduardo, te molesto con esto. ¿Lo puedes poner este, por favor? Uh, it would be page three. Technically, in our charts, it's page two. The one bef before that. This or, presentation uh, is not on the agenda. <laughs> uno, uno más. Este, mira. <clears throat> that was the first one, I think. Yeah. I'm sorry. Right there. If you look at fiscal years 13, 14, 14, 15, 15, 16, I don't want to go to the past. I don't want to blame, play the blame game, be it city manager, city council, finance directors, whomever. It, at this point, it doesn't matter. But I want the public to understand the ramifications that 13, 14, 14, 15, correct me if I'm wrong, and 15, 16 did to our city. They killed us. They freaking killed us. How the budget was approved in those years, I have no clue. And again, it's not the blame game. It's what we have to do moving forward to fix this problem. And again, you've done a great job, Armando. Kudos to you for taking this job and for kicking butt this past year. But we're putting a Band-Aid, yet we're in ER. So we really need to think outside the box and fix this problem. And that's what we all five of us were elected to do. And we can't continue to kick the can year after year after year. And this, this epitomizes kicking the can. We need to move forward, and we need to move forward quickly. Am I, if I'm wrong or if I'm, you disagree, please, please interject, because you're the expert. I agree completely with your comments. Having said that, uh, I know you worked at the city of Stockton. I happen to work there when it went under. Obviously, I love the city of Calexico and don't want it to go under. Uh, and even though we're above water now, we won't be above water in a few years if we don't do drastic measures now. I, I'm always willing to bet money what you're gonna say, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. What are some of your suggestions? Yes. I think a similarity, you mentioned the city of Stockton, a similarity between Stockton and Calexico is that in both cases, these cities had financial records were, that were in disarray, and the city really did not truly understand their financial condition. So I think that one is, you're, you're past that. You have, you have clean audits now. You know where you stand. Um, that's the first thing, right? The first step of recovery is acknowledging where you are. The second is planning ahead. You know, where's the long-term financial forecast? But really, the, in, unless the city is able to increase its revenue base through economic development or new revenues, um, you will be in a situation where you need, you will be crowding out services. And there have been, there actually have been newspaper articles just this week about cities across the state that are crowding out their services because of their pension obligations. And so unless the city is able to raise their revenues, you will be forced to restructure your services, look at alternative service delivery methods, because you cannot continue the cost structure that you have today. If I can add just one more quick comment, <clears throat> Mayor. Uh, and I've talked to you one-on-one -on -one about this, and I know you're kind of dwindling down your time. I cannot emphasize enough, and Eduardo, you've done an admiral job as the acting director of finance, but I cannot emphasize enough 
the need, even though we're broke, to hire a director of finance. Uh, the next three to five year period is going to be critical for the overall sustainability of our city, and we need that type of leadership. And again, you've done an admirable job, so have you, but we need the next level. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else want to make any more comments? Yeah, you, you know, the 3.2 the 3 is, uh, is what we're looking at. And I think Armando has, Mr. Villa has a, a, a plan, and I think Ms. Myers is uh, alerting us to the fact that we need to come up with something drastic to, make, to narrow the gap. And we have a plan. We have to stick to that plan. We met back in April, and we came up with a plan. I think this is a, a way of getting out of this hole Granted, $3.2, $6,000 in reserve is not a reserve. <laughs> That's somebody's monthly paycheck. We're in a hole. We need to get out of it. I ask the community, ask not what you. You've got to give something to the city. It's not always give, give, give. <clears throat> ya no se puede. There's nothing there. We came up with that idea six months ago we are in a hole and we're not out of the hole 3.2 is still our target and we're working on it but thank you for the report you're bringing focus again to what we need to do we have a plan let's stick to the plan little by little we're inching our way there is a way out of this it is we just have to tighten our belts and hope that we don't go under but right everything that mr Escobar said is correct we're in a hole six six thousand dollars reserve is thank you go ahead well thank you once again excellent report um it is dire as far as what the future can hold i understand that but um <laughs> I want to stay optimistic. And Armando Villa, you have done a great job this year. And everybody, the staff. And um, I believe, like Mr. Escobar said, we have to think out of the box. I think that usually the conservative response is a slash and burn kind of response. I hope we um, don't just do that. Um, I have optimism that, it, that we will improve our revenues. And I know that's not the only answer, but I would just hate to see <clears throat> the city so outsourced uh, in services that <laughs> I mean, I'm exaggerating, but people come and there's only one employee in the city. Welcome to Calexico. And I am your city chief, and I am your fire chief, and I am your mayor, and I am everything. Uh, that would be uh, sad. So uh, we need to work hard. I know that there will be some outsourcing uh, discussed and possibly having to be done. <clears throat> but. Uh, to completely outsource the city, that would be horrible, in my opinion. Not that I'm saying that we're planning on doing that, but I'm just uh, giving you my thoughts. But congratulations. Um, um, and, and I think what Mr. Pacheco said is, is true. We stick to the plan. Little by little, baby steps. Um, we'll get out of this. I'm optimistic we're, we will get out of this if, if we stick to the plan. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I have some comments. Um, well, um, again, every time we every time we get a <laughs> a report from you, it just it just kind of all comes back and and um, and and how how we got here. And I, I just I just want to um, I just want to say that it took it took a long time to get to that situation. That didn't happen overnight. It wasn't one council or you know, it, this this took 
many, many years of, of counsels that um, we didn't understand what really hurt us and, and what, what I believe and I think uh, most people would, um, would believe is that what really hurt us was Calexico closing its doors to business for the last 20 years and, and, and longer. Good point. That's, that's what really got us here. It's, it's the people that were up here in the past that, that were telling these businesses, we don't want you here. And they left to cities up north, um, uh, cities like El Centro that, that now have them. And now we're playing catch up because that's the reason why our revenues are stagnant and, and continue to be that way. Um, I, I, I want to thank Armando Villa for uh, coming on um, in a time where it was very uncertain. I mean, you had no idea how we were financially. Um, and, and I want to thank a few silent people that I hope are watching tonight because um, it, it's crazy those times that, that I lived and some of the council members lived uh, where we were being given budgets that, that, were, that were fake. That, um, that didn't have real numbers and, um, and whether it be because they didn't know the real numbers or because they just you know, wanted to uh, make them seem like everything was okay. Um, those staff members that came uh, to me and to other council members said, hey, things are, things are happening, you know, there needs to be changes. People that, uh, ex-city managers and, and people that, that really you know, open, turned on that light to, to enlighten myself to say, hey, these are not real. Um, to make the decisions that we had to take uh, that really saved the city because we were headed for bankruptcy. I truly believe we we're headed for bankruptcy. We're out of that. Um, I'm going to echo Mr. Escobar. Um, <clears throat> we do have a bandage over a gunshot right now, but and, and, and the city is hemorrhaging on the inside, but it's better than what we, where we were. And I think we need to be, um, uh, look, uh, uh, be optimist uh, at, at this point and say, you know, uh, the future still looks grim, but we're not, um, I just read today, city of Escondido, same thing. Uh, many cities throughout the state are having these CalPERS issues and, uh, you know, we, we, we need to find a way to bring in revenue. That's just, uh, we need to attack this uh, from every angle. Um, the past is the past. I, I pray to God we never repeat it. I pray to God that we're, we, uh, we really, um, uh, I'm going to say uh, Reagan's words, trust but verify um, what, what um, staff members tell you because it, it, it's not always true, unfortunately. And, um, and uh, you know that, that these 20 years that passed that got us here, you know, we don't we don't repeat them, and we look we we bring in people like uh, uh, Miguel Figueroa, who are gonna, I know, help us financially with our economic development. I know that it's looking good, but again, we have to be realistic and see that it's not something that's gonna happen this year or next year. You know, it's it's gonna happen years down the road. Um, but um, you know, uh, let's 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 move on and and move forward and um, find a way. Uh, to, to mitigate these $3 million that we're going to have to come up with within the next, you know, four or five years. We're not the only city that's, that's going through this, and we got to figure it out. Um, for the staff, for the people, uh, uh, and this council, you know, I know that uh, I hope that we're going to make the right decisions to, to get the city, um, again, uh, where it should be. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Myers, very much for all your hard work. I don't want to keep everybody that was a little bit long on the comments. Really appreciate it. And I know that uh, economic development is a part of being able to re regrow the, um, the income efforts that the city should have had ongoing as well. Um, because I've heard a lot about thinking outside of the box, how to bring new money to the city and new businesses but we actually need to actually talk about what the actual solution is because we keep saying that. But I know that the fact that you're here, the fact that we have these meetings with Mexicali, for example, there was this one very uh, interesting concept and we're gonna talk about that when we meet later on to tell you what that was. And it's about the fact that there are a lot of individuals out in Mexicali that have talent, that a lot of your companies in the United States could use that talent. And there is actual very uh, special visas and things like that that those uh, talented employees can uh, can fulfill 
And so that is a part of actually really bringing in uh, tools that cities like ours need to grow. And we have it right next door, a lot of that talent. So there's a lot of that economic uh, development efforts as well. We already know our picture. We've known it for a while. Once it's already been straightened out, the spring book will allow then for these types of professional reports that we hadn't had in a while because of the restructuring. Uh, but as far as economic development, I think that that is where we need to be as well. Very aggressive, and I'm very glad you're here because we're ready for that. So thank you very much, Ms. Myers, for your hard work. Any other questions before we let Ms. Myers go? Mr. Villa, any comments? Um, can, can I just ask something real quick? Um, is there a way for um, Mrs. Meyer to be present at the, econo at the finance commission meetings, maybe through phone or something like that? I know that they're having some, you know, sometimes a lot of questions that they need answered that, that Ms. Myers is kind of probably the best one to answer. Is that a possibility? We, we can work on that. Okay. We can work on Thank you, Ms. Myers. Mr. Um, Villa, yeah, did you the, want to make some comments? Is, I'm sorry. Go I'm sorry, Legal, did you want to say something first? Uh, we do have some public comment cards on the item. Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just, Just wanted to make sure Before the public comments, the, the report was a receiving first. file report, and although... How can I know, forget? <laughs> yeah, although the, the, you know, the numbers are not, um, you know, they're not extremely good news, I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's good news for us, and I want to thank you know, the, the staff, uh, the department heads for helping, you know, it, it, this is not just a one person effort. This is the entire city, the city employees stepping up uh, to the plate to accept concessions, to help us close the gap. Uh, those those uh, employee unions that wanted to be part of the recovery uh, stepped up to the plate. And also it was, it was cooperation from the department directors to make things more efficient. I know a lot of them were angry by some of the decisions that I made not to hire people back right away. And, and now you can see the results of it. We were very frugal. We were very, we, we, you know, we're trying to contain expenses. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's sort of a one-two punch that that, that defensive um, approach proved to work. And, and our, our offensive approach will be to work a little harder on trying to bring new businesses, new wells into the community. So hopefully by the next couple of years, we can start to see that, that uh, green line to go up a little more so that the revenues grow uh, with, you know, on, on the same pace, pace as our liabilities and our, our expenses. So you know, we're, we're, we, we gotta thank a lot of people that, that made this possible and, and we're not done yet. I think we're gonna continue to work really hard to, to to improve our, our economic outlook. And I'll, I'll, I'll ask the community to be a little more patient because, you know, every day we get calls about pr public services and, and that things are not getting done, uh, cleaned up. And, you know, we do have, you know, we do have to make decisions not to hire people because of our fiscal condition. But over time, we're gonna try to address the issues little by little. So be patient. And we have, we have I think, a, a very good plan to get out of this, and, and I'm hoping that next year we're gonna be giving you better news than, than today, or at least in three months. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Just, we don't have to vote on this item, right? Mm, it's, it's just, just information. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> we're gonna move real fast now, guys, okay? Okay, item, oh, we have one guest, one speaker, one public speaker, Mr. Kim. Sorry about that, Mr. Kim. I almost forgot you. <clears throat> I thank you for the Ms. Mayor and thank you, thank you for the council. And uh, I don't see, I only have seen the general budget, but they don't have anything, the, the project money or uh, like a federal grant is not there yet. Uh, I believe the September, the one, the, all the federal budget is ending, so we're supposed to have the, all the grant report by the uh, September. And uh, uh, I'm glad Mr. Bia was ma uh, mentioning about the, the, it's not a really good news. This is a number, you could, it's council member, some, some comment from the council member, you could hide from the blame in the past the council, but from now on, it's up to you guys. But be careful, three council members still in this chamber, they were the responsible to all those drastic expenditures. 
Jun Kim was sitting in the council 2012, December. That time, they already have made big the debt to the city of Calexico to make the last of the, the uh, bond, the cost of the city of Calexico reducing the incomes. And Jun Kim was fighting the last four years to get the budget to get correctly. During the, those council three years, the, our council city the working the budget with the comic books. They never truth to the communities. I was fighting and fighting, fighting. Jun Kim luckily be able to change it 2015 with the three vote to administrations. So now we have, since then, the, our uh, financial department working hard to get all the budget in the, in the books. And actually, the, they have a big, big uh, movement to cut about $2 million operating cost, especially insurance, JPIA, they're the one is the biggest uh, hole for us. Again, when the Jun Kim was fighting, who, where were you guys there? Blaming that? Where you got, were you guys there? Three council members still sitting here to dealing our budget. They are the ones who are responsible to blindly to supporting the administrations and throwing the money away. Right now, so we're balancing the budget, sacrificing the citizens' safety and service and the city employees' pay cuts. That's what we're balancing. The future of the, we have a good future? I don't think so. Because our major portion of the income revenue was the sales tax. The sales tax is not going to be going better. Even we bring the more, more, merchant, uh, more uh, merchants, still going to be sh uh, shrinking. That's nationally, the sales tax is going down. Only we could increase it from the property tax. We need to have developments to give them more place to stay. The, for the citizens, but if we're failing safety and the living condition, we are not going to be able to hold the more citizens here. If you don't mind wrapping it up, Mr. Kim. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So, I urge you to council member, don't be this blind council member. You have to work hard and diligence that listens to all the parties and the, the reason of doubt. Thank you. That's only can have a, a, our positive. And we need to have different type of the revenue increase it, not the sales tax. That's the that kind of dead ends. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Next speaker, Mr. Ismael Lopez. Same item. Good evening, Councilman, uh, Mayor, City Attorney, City Manager, Public. Ismael Lopez, 1094 Holdridge. Uh, just a quick comment, and it's in regards of the presentation. Very good, thank you. Uh, one slide is missing, the plan. How we are executing that plan and how that plan is gonna be executed. What are the objectives? Where are the terms? Uh, looks nice, but as Mr. Escobar says, don't kick the can. Where are the numbers? What are we are committing to obtain? If we don't know, every quarter we're gonna be here seeing and hearing it, where is the plan? Where is the forecast? On revenues, on expenses. Now, we're cutting expenses. Why? Are we becoming more diligent, more sophisticated, more efficient with the same uh, people? Or we're hiring better trained people? What are we doing? Are we transferring people where they belong? What are we doing? That we don't hear about. We hear about cutting people, no hiring, there's a hiring freeze. Where's the headcount? What is the forecast? What is the plan? Um, please let us know. So make us believers. We don't want to be like other cities. We're going to go under if this does not happen. Okay? 
What are the attractives? What are our plan on bringing more businesses into the city? Yes, bringing people from, from Mexicali because they're professionals. Uh, where I work, we have 12, okay? Where do they live? On the other side. Where do they spend their money? In El Centro. Where's our working site here in Calexico? Sorry to say, we have none. We haven't promoted. The opportunities are there. Let's go and reach them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. All righty. <clears throat> Moving on to number eight now. Anybody else want to say anything? <laughs> All right. Item number eight is authorize adopt budget amendment resolution for the transfer of three capital improvement program to fiscal year 2017 and 18. Mr. David Dale, Director of Public Works. Thank you. Um, excuse my voice. Uh, a council, Councilman Escobar asked about the, uh, the CIP, and I'll make a report about that later, but we're on track. But uh, if we were, if that weren't enough, uh, $23 million this year, I want to add another $1.7 million on the CIP on this item. There's some three items that I put in for Next year, and one item I had on for 21-22 that is become necessary to implement uh, now. So I'm requesting to uh, change that uh, to this year on that CIP. That's what this, this item is for. City Are manager, there any, any questions? Any comments, City Manager, on this one? Do I have any motion to approve? So move. Second. First by Mr. Pacheco, second <clears throat> by Mr. Escobar. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item passes. Item number nine, approved list of projects for funding under the road maintenance. You're staying there again, aren't you, Dale? Uh, the road maintenance and rehabilitation account, RMRA, for fiscal year 1718. Yeah, this is a requirement we have to uh, approve for the SB1 bill that uh, grants the city's pro approximately $227,000. So we have to uh, make a list of projects approved by council, and uh, there are a couple of projects that we uh, think we can supplement the, those with this funding. Cesar Pro uh, Chavez Boulevard and the Second Street uh, Bridge Widening Project. Oh. Awesome. When do we expect that widening on Second Street to happen? So we, we got the uh, approved plans, we got everything ready to go now, and uh, we're preparing to go to bid on that. Pretty soon. Yeah. And the, as an update to Cesar Chavez, we're looking at, uh, we got a, we're working on authority to proceed from um, the funding agencies, but we're, we're estimating that we're gonna go to bid in November and probably start in February, construction. After, after the holiday? Yes. Yeah, because that'll be a busy, <clears throat> a busy uh, bridge yep. towards mm -hmm. the outlets. Black okay. Friday. And Black Friday. <clears throat> um, do I have any motions to approve this item? Or any questions? Make a motion. Uh, Mr. Hodge leave? Uh, he left. Okay, it's just us. So, um, when will we receive the funding, David? For this funding? Will be when we implement the project, when the project is implemented. When what? It's, it's, for, it's for this fiscal year. Hmm. Within the fiscal year. Can we get it? When the project is actually in completed. construction. Yeah, it, it's, yes. Mm -hmm. It's project specific funding. Is there a motion? I made a motion. Second. <laughs> That's what I asked you, Mr. Pacheco. <laughs> First by Mr. Escobar, second by Mr. <clears throat> by Mr. Pacheco. All in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> item approved. All right. Um, I don't believe I had any speakers on item nine. Item number 10, authorized public works director, city engineer to sign change order number four with Unicom Government Inc. in the amount of 128958 and 89 cents for the advanced metering infrastructure AMI system project. We had, this is on the CIP, another item on the CIP. Uh, we had budgeted $200,000 because we knew that there were more meters that we had to purchase. Uh, so there's a list in this that you have before you of the number of meters. These are mostly, mostly larger meters, uh, two inches and above. And uh, basically there's, there were some meters that were still needed on the project and we added some more meters because of state requirements that we need to start metering our parks, green areas, and municipal buildings. So those are, these are the meters for that. Uh, every year I have to fill out a water loss 
audit and in most cases it's something of a guess because we don't have the meters for those areas and this is to complete the project. Make a motion to approve. Second. I do have a question just because I saw something here. Being that this is coming out of um, the second, I'm just kind of curious because I asked you this earlier, Mr. Rivian. Water operating funds? Correct. Which is outside of our general fund. Will the council be receiving any um, uh, reporting on the financial statuses of these other funds someday? And we can ask. Because like when we're looking at all this, we, mm -hmm. we haven't seen any quarterly reporting, have we? I think we're going to prepare for for the next meeting. We're going to give you a, a, a an update on the first quarter. On a report? Yes. An, an actual report coming? Are on we able to prepare it from Springbrook already? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I got I got some motions, but I'm sorry. <coughs> Made motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Pacheco, second by Mr. Escobar. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, next one is. Uh, You're sitting, sitting next to Mr. V. I know. It doesn't anybody else. The chair here. <laughs> Once they put my name there, I'll sit there. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do appreciate, we're making fun, but we really do appreciate all this work that you're doing, Mr. Dale. All righty. Item number 11. Uh, we do have a public speaker on item number 11. Mr. Kim, you want to come over and have your comments? I actually have a few on that one. I have two on that one. Madam, Madam, Madam Mayor, can we have the staff report presented You want to do that first? Yes, thank you. Is that what you guys want to do first? Take, do all that and then we'll do okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, this item is to request authorization to move forward on just seeking proposals for a water and wastewater rate study. It is, has nothing to do with changing any rates at this time, but we're seeking only authorization to seek proposals. Um, on this April, is, go ahead. This is something that the council passed in 2016, correct? It was passed on April 5th, 2016, but only for water, and at that time it was uh, authorized $75,000 for just the water rate study mm -hmm. and for whatever reason that never got implemented so we're coming back to um, ask again to make okay. sure that this is okay to go go forward with a proposal uh, seeking proposals um, make a motion to approve maybe he might want to explain just a little bit more. oh okay we have, we have public <laughs> speakers in yeah. um, it's, it, it's an interesting thing it's important. Uh, I've been here just a few months uh, working uh, on CIP and other issues and with, um, have a lot of complaints about the water rate structure the way it is uh, with residences and also with the way it's set up for businesses. And the way it is is that it's $43.89 and you uh, get up to 22,000 gallons. Well, Can you repeat that for the public? Our water rate are, is $43.89. That's the water bill. The water rate is forty-three dollars and eighty-nine cents, up to twenty-two thousand gallons a month. If you go over twenty-two thousand gallons, there's additional fees. Water only. Water only. And nothing to do with sewer. The other items that appear on their bill. Correct. The sewer only. bill is thirty-eight dollars, even, and that is again up to twenty-two thousand gallons of water use. Mm -hmm. So, I I feel that that may be an archaic um, billing structure that we have a minimum uh, amount of water that you, you can use. Uh, we're looking at the pot potential of changing that and uh, with council approval, of course, and 218 process and, and the rate study and all that stuff. But making a lower base rate and um, allowing residences to be able, if they want to, to save money on their bill by reducing their water consumption. So it, it helps, it may help with the water uh, rates and it may help with also uh, saving conservation of water. Um, water rate studies really should be done every five years. And why is that? Because there's interest rates uh, change. The cost of, of service changes every year. And it, and it varies every year. In one year it might go up 4%. One other year it might go up 2%. One year it might drop 5%. But it should be studied every five years because if not, then you're sort of operating in the dark and, and, and you're, you're not using the, all the resources that you could possibly use. So anyway, this, this is, again, very simply, just to authorize seeking proposals. At, at, if we do get approval for this and we get 
proposals, then we'll bring them back to the council for approval to move forward with the rate study. But this at this time is just authorization to seek RFPs. Yes. <clears throat> Motion to approve. We have some speakers. Public comment. We have some speakers. And this, let's make sure. I know, I know we're all for it, but let's make sure everybody talks this out. <laughs> Mr. Kim. Yeah, I know this council doesn't want a public talk, but you just want to pass. Even last meeting was the same happens without comment. And uh, first of all, I hope this one is not the happening last month. Last meeting, City of Calexico hired a consultant to master plan of the water and wasting, wastewaters. And uh, I hope this one is not because we hire the consultant to hire the consultants. And uh, I'm glad with the Mr. Dale was a clear, clarifying. It was the, the council was the last year to pass it, 2016. It was the intention to water and waste. I don't know why the sentence was missing, but the water is wasted to the, uh, the proposal. <clears throat> and I uh, hopefully at this time, the water waste study include to water, uh, water bill as a usage. Like uh, Central and other cities, they have some uh, uh, initial connection fees, $5, $10, and then later on they have the, the paper the, as a use. And we have to do that. They're going to be saving a lot of the, uh, people's uh, housing, the watering cost. And uh, I hope this one is going well to benefit of the community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Mm, Mr. Manuel Yanez? Denier. Okay. And he's not to go anywhere else. Okay, so then we are done. I will now Can I make a, a comment? <laughs> yes. Yeah, sure. Before I take, we take a vote. Um, um, I want to really thank the staff, um, city manager, on this. I, this is something that I have been um, uh, fighting for since I got elected. Um, it, it makes me uh, very... Um, happy that we're here, but uh, sad to see other ex-council members come up here and say they they want this when they never um, helped in the past when we we're trying to get this done. But um, nonetheless, uh, this is something that's very important to our city. I, I I ended up making a video about two years ago that reached like 70,000 people that saw it. Um, that everybody. Uh, feels that this this the city needs this rate study to figure out exactly where we're at. I'm just very excited. I want to thank the staff and the council for hopefully uh, the yay votes to support this. And uh, I think a lot of the citizens will definitely benefit from this. Um, and uh, it, it will be a good thing for our city. So again, I'll make the motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Real. Second by Mr. Govan. Jesus. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. You can sit right. down now, Mr. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Next to Mr. Reed. Okay. We're done with that one. Item number 13 is our last one. No. Oh, oh, sorry about that. Gosh darn it. It's already 9 o'clock. Um, consideration of a letter of understanding with the SEIU operators. We have a speaker, but I guess we'll wait until everybody makes their comments. Yeah, let me give you a, little, a brief uh, staff report. This is a, a request for approval of a letter of understanding between the City of Calexico and the Calexico Certified Operators, SCIU, Local 221. And basically, this is a, a three-year uh, letter of understanding with uh, one of our uh, labor unions, uh, most the the the, the employees that work for the water plant and uh, sewer plant, the water operators, they've, they've agreed basically to, to pick up their, their CalPERS, 7%. They've, all, they've agreed to a graduated health um, benefit pickup starting at 15% and going all the way up to 20%. And uh, again, this would be a, um, a three-year agreement with, with the group with a stipulation that um, in the future, should the city uh, see better returns or better re uh, revenues uh, exceeding $5 million in sales tax, that we can revisit some of these concessions. So
So um, uh, unless there's any more questions, this concludes my staff report. This is then the three years, just to make sure we're clear with the public, the three-year period that this MOU is covering is which year to which year? The I'm term sorry, is, the back term back? is, the period of, the term is uh, September of 2017 through June 30th, 2020. Through June uh, 30th, 2020. 2020, yes. Okay, so actually this covers the, okay. Any questions, gentlemen? Just want, I just want to note that this would also be contingent upon the dismissal of the unfair labor practice charge that they filed. I'm um, sorry, repeat that again, that It would be contingent and tied into the unfair labor practice charge that was previously filed against the city. So. Thank Motion you. Motion to approve. Thank you for that clarification. Second. First by Mr. Real, second by Mr. Escobar. Aye. Oh, Mr. Kim, I'm so sorry. I'm so tired. First of all, I like to I like to uh, I like to congratulate uh, Mr. Villa to get uh, uh, resolution with them. But I hope that we don't we don't do we don't do with the uh, uh, overtime issues today have been occurred to make sure we've been settled settled down with the the right rules with the overtime matters. And the other one is, I'm sad. I'm sad we see of Calexico has to, depending on the employee's payroll cut, to balance the budget. I keep, say, I keep the, talking to the, the, all the union members to say, keep the budget. Watching the budget, how city, city of Calexico is spending, that is, in, is the city of Calexico running good? That's going to be good for, the, for the, all the city, healthy. But if the city of Calexico doesn't spend right, and sooner or later, they're going to be attacked their paycheck. And that's the coming the truth. So I hope the council and the city administration to watch it for the uh, care for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Any other further comments from the council? No? Make the vote. Okay. Motion. <clears throat> Your motion. Yeah. Well, Second. it's because usually you mean Second. to kind of like wait until the speakers <laughs> One, are two, done. If not, you guys good are going to lose. I didn't understand Aye. anyways. Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 Congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Villa, thank you. Yeah. That was a little a informal, but that thank was an you. actual vote for, by the board to approve item number 12. Yeah, I think the, uh, the clerk need to clarify the first with um, Mr. Real. Uh, Real. Second, Mr. Escobar. Escobar. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Help me out, guys. All righty, next item, number 13, is the uh, appointment for, by the City Council of a resident commissioner to the Calexico Housing Authority Board. I will make the motion to um, approve Mrs. Silva. Mm -hmm. um, just, a, just a comment, gentlemen, to the public. Mrs. Silva was the only person that submitted, it appears. That's her correct. Application. She is already experienced, and her letter is actually very uh, inspiring, saying that she's already working together, and she's very motivated with the, the board that we have now. So good for her and good for the Housing Authority of the City of Calexico. So, motion again by Mr. Real, second by? Me. Mr. Escobar, all in favor? Mr. Me, aye. All in favor, aye? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was so hard. <laughs> ah. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Okay, so that uh, item has been passed. Congratulations, Ms. Silva. We are now at the item, uh, the future agenda items of the agenda. Gentlemen, would you guys, uh, it is 9 o'clock. I don't know if you have any items. You guys just want to pass that item and get going? Yeah, I, I just, um, we had, um, I'm, I don't have any future agenda items other than the, I think last time we mentioned uh, as soon as we could get the, um, the possible closure of that yes. uh, area in downtown. Or, um, that's about it. Other than that, I'm Mr. talking about Rockwood. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. Rockwood between first and second? Correct. As far as I, doing, I support that. doing a, uh, I guess you will call it a um, pilot, pilot that's, program that's or something. Yeah, we're working on it. Okay. We're working on it. Where Other than that, go ahead, go ahead. Where are we with the, uh, with the write-up you were going to come up with those uh, properties that are abandoned and we're trying to uh, make the uh, owner uh, 
abatement yes, program, uh, right? the abatement program? Actually, that, that, that report is coming to you at the next city council meeting, the abandoned okay. property maintenance ordinance. Yes. Okay. okay, cool. That was important. Yeah, it's coming to you next time. Okay. Okay. Uh, Alrighty. Okay. Motion to adjourn. One more. One more. Oh. I, I, I think in lieu of what happened in Las Vegas, the city, I think we need to show a little respect and maybe have our flag at half mass for these three days, uh, Thursday, Friday. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. I don't think yeah. we're we have been doing just, it right. Just to yeah. show, uh, okay. uh, just to show support. That yes, we're taking mm -hmm. them into consideration. We we can do that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Aye. 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 Thank you very much.